So here we are with, I mean, it's a ton of stuff, right? So I had no way to kind of show you everything uh, at once, but this is really uh, the gist of it. And I love the idea of uh, having my trinkets out, but also just to kind of show you the package stuff. I think it's a great way to display uh, all of your seasonal stuff. I've used a muffin tin for years. So when I'm in the making season, I like to take out all the little trinkety pieces uh, and put them into a muffin tin. I've done this for years because it's a, it is, it's a fun way to kind of see what I have to work with, but this is really the line. So I'm going to kind of go through that. I'll set this off to the side just for right now. We'll try to, I don't even, I, this was a good display in my head, but now I'm trying to work with it and we'll see if I, okay, I think I have room. I have kind of room like right in here. We'll take you through the stuff. Uh, first thing we're going to talk about are a couple of structures, right? So the thing to, to understand about this release, and if you watch the, the Instagram live that I did at the beginning of August, when this, when we launched the, the actual brand, uh, we talked about shipping phases and we talked about how all of these brands are really doing their best to get product here uh, as quickly and efficiently as possible. And ideology is no different. So many ideology products, many of the SKUs that you're going to see today already were released and shipped at the beginning of the month. Some stuff didn't make it in time. Good news is that it has made it and the balance of the ideology Halloween will be shipping to retailers starting Monday, right? Monday next week. So if your store has sold out or they didn't get some of the certain items in, trust that they are coming back in because uh, the balance of their orders uh, will be shipping starting on Monday, except for one item, which is a new item. Uh, this one SKU, for whatever reason, it was just delayed and delayed and delayed and delayed. And instead of holding everything else up, I'm like, let's just ship the second wave uh, starting on Monday and this can ship when it gets here. Uh, this is the new vignette art shrine. It's a very cool shape for uh, the wooden vignettes. Where do you see the makes? It's a great box. This will not be uh, shipping until mid-September, okay? So fear not, you can still get all of your other stuff, but if you're, if you're holding out to, to create one of these makes, just know mid-September, still plenty of time. That's like a month and a half before Halloween. But also I think the shape uh, lends itself to many other makes besides just Halloween, but I liked it. It was inspired by the coffin that I've done in the past. If you guys uh, remember the coffin box, right? So you can see that it has a, a pretty similar angle to the coffin not as sharp as the older coffin box. This one did not come back, right? This, this was a favorite, this, this was many, many years, but this didn't come back. So instead I kind of widened it, to, there's no shelf in there, but this has a couple of base pieces like our shrine. So it can stand up because it's got two pieces in there that go as, as a base. Uh, but also I felt that this angle was a bit challenging to work on, especially if you wanted to stand up the coffin because it wanted to fall over. So that was kind of the reimagined uh, shrine for for Halloween, very cool. And again, mid-September, everything else has either already shipped or will be shipping. Uh, the balance of it will be shipping starting on Monday to your retailers, all right? And this is worldwide, of course, so things will take a little time. Next is a, a Curio Clock. Now we launched this clock at the beginning of the year, the Curio Clock, and it, came, it comes out in a matte black. That's what we have for the everyday. What I wanted to do different just for Halloween is create a glossy black version. So it's the same clock, it's the same opening, same size, everything, but this one has a shiny, glossy black finish, which I thought was very cool for Halloween. And you'll see from the makes why just having that shiny finish is fun and unique. And check out that cool sample. The real sample is actually here. Paula made the sample. Paula makes all the samples for uh, the packaging. So yeah, she does a great job, but this one's actually here in real life. So very cool. Those are the structures for Halloween. Look, I think I can actually put this back in this little box. And this new little wooden divider, it's kind of working for me. Works, All right, yeah. it does, it, it works really well. All right, uh, so these are the backdrops. Now there's gonna be some SKUs I'll talk about that, that came back exactly as is, and there's gonna be some SKUs that we, we changed just a few things on, and so I'll try to highlight that in the live. So our backdrops, this is our printed paper. It's double-sided paper. This is where Chris just really does his magic from you know taking ledgers or sheets or book covers and just giving it just this yummy, yummy aesthetic. Uh, we did update a few images on the backdrops, not 100%. So you might recognize some of the papers from last year if you still have backdrops from last year, but we do like to just throw in a few new ones um, every year because I think it is fun just to, to not only have some, some of the classics, but a little bit of newness. So I'm happy that we have our backdrops. This one, our worn wallpaper scraps, this one did not change at all. So if you still have your worn wallpaper scraps from last year, first thing, use it 
Second, if you weren't using it because you didn't think you could get it again, well, now you can get it again and use it. Uh, the cool thing about worn wallpaper scraps for Halloween uh, in particular, and I'm just gonna open this package. I won't do too much, but I just wanna share a couple of things. Um, we just like to go a little bit above and beyond in, in the grunge aesthetic, right? So besides that you get these great die cuts, worn wallpaper has this uh, really cool texture to it, okay? But like, take a look at that, right? That's like wallpaper right out of a Florida hotel. Mario calls this one like Golden Girls, right? So good uh, with that staining. So that's what we do for Halloween. Just give it a little bit more uh, deeper, darker grunge. Everything still has, uh, even in worn wallpaper, has some great aesthetic, but look at that. I mean, just something out of a, a cool haunted house. Of course, you could always ink and drip this even more, but these wallpapers, they're just, they're a lot of fun, right? That's kind of like an old circus tent. Love it, right? So that's the, that's the benefit of this. And of course, you can tell from the pattern, if you really like this kind of uh, grungier aesthetic, this is where you stock up on Halloween worn wallpaper and use it all year, right? Because it still has some great botanical and damask. And I mean, look at this one. Look at this little bit of, I just flipped through it. Look at that grunge goodness. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So just things to keep in mind. And that's the other thing that you're going to, especially if you're new to ideology, you will clearly see the possibilities for these products well throughout uh, not only the season, but into the year, if you do those kind of makes, all right? We'll keep going, we're just kind of moving on. I'm, I'm just picking stuff out of the box at random, then I'll put it back in if I can. All right, sticker book. So sticker book curiosities, we did update the sticker book. The first part of the sticker book are favorites. These are the clipping stickers. These have not changed, so if you have these, these are all words from books that Paula goes in and clips out. They're great stickers. They are cut very random, very haphazardly, right? Again, cool uses for junk journals and all sorts because these have a little bit more of a disturbing tone to them, uh, and I love that. But we did do some changes in the sticker book. Here you can see we've got some portraits. We've got these great little masks, so you'll see a lot of masks on the paper dolls. These came from this sticker book. You just peel and stick, and they fit uh, not only these portraits in here, but also the paper dolls that we do every day and Halloween. We added some, some fun witch hats, and this perspective allows you to, uh, if you have a paper doll, put the paper doll head like right on top so it looks like they're wearing the hat, right? You could cut a little slice out if you wanted to. And then these fun skulls, again, you're gonna see, uh, we did scale these skulls. Besides that these are great stickers, the full and the half, we scaled these for paper dolls as well. So you're gonna see a few paper doll heads replaced uh, by these skulls and that was intentional it's by design but that's the fun thing we have a good time where we think like you know how can we kind of creep out the stuff uh, a little bit more then we wanted to add some elements again for junk journal uh, or anyone that's, that's doing mini books just some great hinges right so these are just printed they're not punched but you can you can fold them you can score them you can stick them down there's some keyholes again in some different sizes where you can put those even on a card and then just some creepy watch faces. So if you have the ideology watch hands, you could add those, just some fun stuff. But that's what we like to do just to, just to change things out, right? We don't do much with stickers, but believe it or not, don't underestimate the power of a sticker book. Really, it's good. Then we have Remnant Rubs, a favorite. I found this art and I just really uh, loved the look of this. And I think the important thing to know about uh, when it comes to remnant rubs is that these actually work on so many different surfaces from metal to glass to plastic to wood to fabric to resin uh, these were all inspired by vintage grave uh grave stone rubbings i think maybe even paula sent me this link too and i'm like i had this in my file right somebody licensed this art they went and did these rubbings uh and we both loved it and i'm like you know what we're gonna do we're gonna do rubs for these and they're, they're two sheets exactly the same so you get two of each sheet these will work great on cards so they're scaled large and then all of these smaller ones uh, are scaled to fit the tombstones. We did tombstones last year. They came back one more year. This will be their last year uh, that they're coming out. So these rubs all fit these little resin tombstones. And they're fun to, to grit and grunge up. So if you have these or uh, you plan on using them, you might want to stock up because they won't be back next year. But in addition to all these little icons, I just wanted to do a, a, a fun play uh, on some of the words that you can put on the tombstones. We'll start with Theo later. That's funny. I like stupidity. That's good. Anita Shovel, no regrets, Phil Dirt, I'm a goner, and no escape. I mean, these are good. And these are all scaled, again, to, to fit onto uh, these tombstones. You can use them on other things, of course. And then just some great 
uh, kind of scroll work, but has a, a very cool Gothic vibe to them as well. I love just that they are vintage inspired imagery. Totally unique, right? But when you see it, it does. It has that very kind of macabre feel, creepy. Yep, so those are the rubs. And then this one, um, many of you will remember these from, from years ago. These are deco sheets. We actually, not only are bringing them back for Halloween, but we're also bringing them back for Christmas, just so you know. Uh, we had this in the ideology line many years ago. They did really well, then I kind of moved on. But with all the die cuts, with all uh, the punches, the adding a little bit of sparkle and glam, I wanted to bring them back one more time. So they're only coming back for this season. They're not coming back next year. I just thought, let's bring them back once more. What we did do a little different, we resized them. So it's just not this, this giant sheet to work with because this is adhesive back. It's a very thin vinyl. It's very sparkly. It's not glitter at all. There's no glitter on these, although they look very sparkly. Uh, it's a printed process. Because it's adhesive back, you can stick it onto chipboard. You can stick it onto vinyl. You can stick, um, I'm sorry, onto uh, cardstock. You could stick it onto vinyl if you want. But it, it, it is a thin vinyl that you can stick it onto other substrates. You can punch die cut uh look at that look at that cool sparkle and it's just a peel and stick very very thin so i like this for any kind of uh, intricate die cuts any words so there's this brighter orange look at this diamondy black and again it's smooth i know you would think that it has a texture but it's smooth and then take a look at this new purple right beautiful looks like fortune teller mica stain doesn't it nice and this is what i used um well on these guys Right when I did Sizzix and we talked about that little bit of sparkle, right? They're really nice under there because it just, it allows you to layer on the top because it's smooth. So it's not like you're trying to stick something down to a bumpy uh, glittered cardstock. I just like the sparkle on there. So that's a nice thing about deco sheets. And you can use these with alcohol ink. So you can add alcohol ink to these and stain this even more if you wanted to grunge them up. It's a lot of fun stuff. Archival works on this as well. So you can stamp on them. So. Those are the deco sheets. So those are the three colors. You get multiple sheets of those. And then these came back another year, right? Label stickers. These are just a, a plastic sticker, kind of like a vintage label maker. These are raised and printed and already cut. So great for cards and a lot of different uh, books and journals. Okay, I, I didn't anticipate this part. Didn't anticipate when I took stuff out that I would create like a bit of a, oh, it's holding up pretty well. Okay, no, I, thanks Mario. This actually did well. Okay. Now I'll just bring stuff in. These are the transparencies. So transparency is a lot of fun. This is a printed heavyweight transparency. There's all different images, right? The back represents what you have. So you can put tiny lights behind these. You can see through them. They are transparent. Um, so they're fun to light up. Also these bat wings, cool, transparent, and all scaled for the different sizes of paper dolls. So if you wanted to give the paper dolls some bat wings, uh, really cool and fun. And you'll see these used so many different ways in the makes. Then we have baseboards. So baseboards, some new art. Again, we updated the art. We've got a lot more words because many people wanted these for cards and vignette projects. So we created these words. This baseboard, this is a printed chipboard. So it's very thick. Again, you can see all the different art on the back. There's a great skull, this beautiful frame. There's actually a couple of frames. This frame has been in years past. Uh, we brought in that bullseye cigar box. This one, really creepy. These are doors, right? Uh, it's this black door right here. I'll just take it out. I'm trying not to take out all the pieces, but hey, <laughs> that, that's that. Uh, why only this year? Um, because Marty, I, I like to just make a decision and stick with it. If they do well, then I'll, I'll live with it. But I just, I wanted to bring them back one more time because I don't like to always bring stuff back again and again, but when I do, it's just going to, for a special reason. So if you like them, you can stock up. So here's the cool thing about this door. Take a look at that door with the chain and the lock, it does have these panels in, the other one's still in there, so you could leave it with the panel, that's the finished art, or you can pop it out and you can put screen behind it or mica. It's just more of a creepy door for the baseboard uh, doors and windows, but a lot of fun pieces, a lot of cool things. You can do hardware heads on it, you'll see it used. Then we've got the Halloween layers, and Halloween layers, I just, I love it. I love when we just can add new unique things. You're gonna see some great fun pieces in here. Besides some classics coming back, uh, there's butterflies, a new moon face. There's these great uh, columns and curtains. So where do you see these used? Very cool as well. Just some unique elements, always a mix of, of old and new, unless I tell you like we didn't want to change it because we loved it exactly how it was. Most of the time, 
Um, Cause we like to give Chris a challenge. We're like, well, let's just change 10%. And then Tracy's like, oh, thanks. Now we got to start over. Yes, but it's worth it. Remember that guys. So this is the new ephemera pack again, updated. Um, you'll see some pieces like the eye and Poe that we brought back uh, year after year, but a lot of new stuff. You see all these little bats? These are all individually die cut bats, many of them, different sizes. You're gonna see them uh, coming off of wire, off of moon. There's a great uh, moon piece in there. Some different colors, some different labels, right? So we wanted to throw in some purples and some reds, uh, some great botanicals, some creepy botanicals, some flashcards uh, in different sizes. So this pack has a whole mixture of sizes from regular size to even snippets. So it's a great package, 114 pieces of ephemera in here. There's a lot of stuff uh, to pick from for Halloween or if you kind of like that little creepier part of, of your journals. Then collage tiles. So collage tiles, these have been updated. Uh, what I wanted to do is kind of take note from uh, how we launched the collage tiles in March. So what we did is we included still some collage ones. So these ones actually, I collage here in the studio just using ephemera, glue, crayon, and then we scan them in. So these have a great layered effect. Then we just take some pieces from our backdrops that we can uh, maybe zoom in on, right? Like the 31 or this eye chart. And then we wanted to just incorporate just some a little creepier photos, right? Some great photos to include. So these, all of these tiles, they are the same uh, size. I think they're inch and a half square that you can tile on uh, the vignette panel. They're just great for card fronts, great for uh, mini books, just very cool, fun. And then of course, a favorite, uh, paper dolls. Uh, this is just one that I think, you know, when, when Paula is looking for photos, it, we really try to find the creep ones. The creep ones that are just, I don't know, fun and creepy. Still keep some classics. You're going to see uh, some paper dolls that have probably been in for years because we love them, but we always want to update the cast when we can. Uh, much to, to Tracy and Chris's dismay, I'm sure, because it is probably one of the most time-consuming SKUs that we do. If you guys really saw uh, how we start with these and the amount of work that goes into them, it's, it's really, it's unbelievable uh, how time-consuming. And even you know, down to the die cuts and the bleeds and, oh man, there's so many, so many different steps to these. But uh, a mix of cast and characters, again, some new, uh, some returning favorites. We also wanted to include some portraits, some portraits that we put in these little cabinet card frames, right? So these are fun for rubs uh, or again for larger projects. Then with the, the release, oh, there's more, there's tons of these. Then with the release of snapshots, right? We wanted to just throw in some snapshots that we uh, we did. We launched snapshots in March this year. They're just kind of a different way to use photos. So we wanted to include some Halloween ones, some trick-or-treaters, these little boys that carve pumpkins, right? Look at this. This is one of Paula's favorites. Look at that face. Wow. And the fact that he's sitting out there with socks, like out in the yard. It's very odd. Uh, and then this, you know, could be an asylum. Who knows? It's just, it's a, it was an asylum, actually. I'm not saying it could be. It was, but still, it could just be an old house if that, if that freaks you out too much. Uh, but I, I love that. So, you know, we just wanted to, to just give a little mix for seasonal, right? We couldn't find enough Halloween snapshots to fill a whole pack. But, hey, yeah, a little mix is good. A little, little blend of that is really good. All right? Now I'm just going to stick these in. Thanks, Mario. Okay. All right. It's just easier than it all stay in the box, right? All right. Then some other paper things. We've got some tape and collage paper. Now, both of these are new. So first we'll start with uh, the design tape. So design tape, take a look at what's in here. We've got this great wide uh, black crackle, this wide marble. So this is good if you're gonna do hinges, flaps for scrapbooks, for cards, again, for junk journals. And then we have all of these skinny trims. These four trims, these are what, uh, these are perfect for cards, of course, and tags, but these also fit on the edge of all of the vignettes. So when you see the front facing of, of a vignette box, right, this little edge right here, this tape is sized that you can tape right over that edge to create a nice finished trim. So that is what we have in the design tape. But just for a second, let's just enjoy that crackle, shall we? Because that's just good. Well, so is the marble. Very good. And here, I thought right? you did the wide tape for my yep. boxes. I know, Mario does use this. He's like, I love your tape. I'm like, you're using tape on boxes? But he likes to just add a little decoration. You, used the, it you, just, did, you did the width for your box. That's right. Oh, man. That's right. What a good idea. Yeah, there you go. Not just for my boxes. Now, take a look at this collage paper. This collage paper, I got to tell you, it's one of those things that when you see it in the package, you really cannot appreciate how beautiful the art is for collage paper. This is the new art for the Halloween collage paper. Take a look at that. Absolutely beautiful. Some great 
uh, kind of creepy botanicals in there. This could easily be used year round, right? Some music, this iron gate, uh, this little uh, vintage letterhead for costumes, millinery, right? A little bit of poetry right there with night, right? 10 o'clock is just really, it has a, has a very cool, creepy Gothic vibe, but it would also work anytime. Now, if you're not familiar with uh, this collage paper, it's a very thin printed tissue. I just have it sitting. I just have it like just taped onto this. Um, and so it, it's a very thin printed tissue, but when you use distressed collage medium over it, so you would put some collage medium down, you'd place your collage paper and do another layer of collage medium. This white becomes translucent. So it looks like this is printed on and you'll see from the makes like this can go on fabric, this could go on wood and it just kind of uh, just completely makes the white part of this paper disappear and all you see it looks like it's printed on. Absolutely beautiful. But we wanted to do something a little different for Halloween and I love the, the botanic vibe that we have because I do think it is going to, uh, to play into different, different makes throughout. All right. And we'll go on to the trinkety stuff. I do love trinkety bits, right? All sorts of trinkety bits. Uh, a lot of stuff came back, right? Broomsticks came back. Really fun. I like these. Uh, favorite bubbles. These come back only once a year for Halloween. These are clear little acrylic balls that you can ink. You'll see some great uses for these. Glass test tubes. These also came back. So these are glass with cork. Wonderful for uh, party favors, but also some just some very cool different makes. As I mentioned, tombstones, these came back. Now, although it's the same shape as last year, we did do it a little bit lighter than last year, uh, just because of the remnant rub. So these are a little bit lighter gray. So if you have last year's and you want to use them, you might want to, you know, put a layer of say some light gray paint on it before you do the rubs. Cause I think last year's were a little too dark, uh, but, or, and you can even paint these as well. They're cool again, but you know, you got to move on to, to new stuff. Boneyard that came back for another year. These are great, great little uh, resin bones. They're just fun to, to play with and, and create some unique looks. Cauldrons, of course, our favorite. You can fill them with bubbles, fill them with tiny lights, fill them with can candy, all sorts of uh, cool things. These are resin. These are pretty uh, heavy, solid things. My favorite, please, can we, just for a minute? It's like it's childhood, right, in the palm of your hand. I do love these jack-o'-lanterns resin jack lanterns but this is what i'm saying about the detail right just have they have that that cool antiquing the perfect color the stain the little bendy wire handle so you can shape it however you want and of course you can fill it with stuff there's some candy in there yep very cool then we brought back the urns this year again we changed the color on these uh previous years of urns had kind of a a greenish uh, look to them this i wanted to go kind of concrete and stone built it up to make them a little bit chunkier not much different, but still very cool. You'll see why when we talk about like grit paste and things you can do with them, but shape wise, they're good. Good for flowers and all sorts of uh, dead things that you wanted to create. Tiny lights came back. Now tiny lights, the difference between the tiny lights that we do for the season versus every day, because we do have tiny light clear every day. These right here, these are uh, purple and green. So one strand is purple, one strand is green. The best colors of purple and green you will see. Trust me, when you see the makes, you'll know exactly why we wanted to bring those back for Halloween. Uh, then everyone's favorite, I talk about this pretty much throughout the year when I talk about it. This is mummy cloth. And I know that many, many makers use it. I mean, Stacy, Emma, Zoe, Paula, like they use it year round uh, because really what mummy cloth is, it's a very thin like cheesecloth, okay? So it doesn't have any stitched edges. It's completely inkable, so you can spray it with any spray stains or use your ink pads or oxide, but because it's not stitched, it, it easily frays. So you'll see people like just use little snippets of it and have it go behind botanical uh, just to create those, those cool little thread vibes at the end, just using your fingers. Uh, isn't that cool? It's the coolest stuff. Um, there's other makers like Stacy that'll put a little collage medium on it to give it some shape. I know Paula's done some, some cool effects with it. It's just, it's a great, it's one of those things that you kind of buy for the year, much like bubbles, right? Because these are great uh, year round when you want to use them. So there's just certain things that we bring out during the season that you're like, okay, I got to remember that. And so when you, when you hear mummy cloth, you're like, yeah, I don't really need it. But then when you see it used in the makes where it's tucked into a barrel or put behind some flowers, you're like, oh, that's beautiful. It's just nice because of that little bit of, of thin cheesecloth designed to take color. That's why we did that, right? Then we have some new stuff. 
in the trinkety bits. So let me just move this stuff out of the way. I do like this box. This is actually working out quite nice. I didn't know if it would last night when I was setting up, but dang, I'm happy. Cause I normally never know where to put stuff and I just throw it in a pile. All right, some updated things. First, these guys, these skulls. Now uh, we've done skulls in the past and I love, I love skulls. These have been the skulls that we've done for years, right? We've done them and they're very cool. They're made out of resin. They already have that great uh, antique finish. I just wanted something a bit creepier. So these guys did not come back. These are the new skulls. You can see much bigger, totally different uh, level of dimension and depth because by going bigger, we were able to go more detailed, which is just what I wanted to do. So you can see like from the rows of teeth, I mean, come on, come on. That crack going across his head, those eye sockets, just, they're really very cool. So if you have a stash of these, they look great together. You'll see some of the makes with them together, but these are the new skulls. These are gone. And I'll talk about some of the stuff that went away and give you some suggestions on, you know, maybe where to still find some. Come right? on, let me see one right. of those. Sure, there you go. Then we've got this. We've got these pumpkins. These are very cool because Mario's holding this skull, just looking at it. Uh, it yeah, it's like, take a look at that. Out. So here we've got these pumpkins. What's cool about the pumpkins this year is that we actually made them a bit taller. If you've noticed in the past, the pumpkins were much shorter because um, we wanted to stack them and kind of put them in places. But many of the makers have just used them as, as elements in a vignette. And so what we did is just finish that little round. So it's the same, I'm just gonna say shape, if you will, but these are taller because they're finished all the way down. So it's, it's very easy to mix and match the pumpkins, but I wanted something a little bit taller. You'll see when you use them uh, that we can do uh, just, it just has a finished look to it now. And they'll still stack together and, and create just some cool effects. Then we've got some, some fun trims. Now this is really gonna be more for uh, kind of party stuff, right? If you wanna do, he's like, there you go. Uh, if you wanna do some party stuff, maybe you wanted to add this to uh, invitations or decor. Both of these trimmings, this one is tinsel. Now this tinsel is really interesting because it has that vintage aesthetic, right? It's very thin and not to be confused with like a chenille stem, a pipe cleaner. You can see that's, that's how thin those are. This is the tinsel, right? It's much fluffier, okay? It has a great sparkle, but it's actually wired. So the nice thing about this, and you'll see from some makes, is that you, know, you can add it to something and you can have something off of the end of this. Uh, if you shape it, and you'll see one of the makes where Paula uh, shaped it underneath something, it will maintain its shape because it's wired. You can trim it, right? So if you don't want it to be as long or as fluffy as this, uh, you can just trim this with your scissors, right? So there's a lot of things that we can do just to, to kind of alter this. But this is just one of those things that if you like a little uh, nostalgic sparkle on your, your party decor, that's really what this is designed to achieve. And then I'm so happy this came back. I really am. This is Fringe. Uh, we did Fringe several years ago and I'll admit it, it was not the best. We tried. Uh, but we tried to do it out of tissue paper and the tissue paper just didn't hold up to what we wanted to do with it. Uh, it, it literally dissolved. And so I just said to Tracy, I'm like, we need to get crepe paper. We need like legit old school crepe paper. And that's how we need to reimagine this. In addition to that, I also wanted the fringe to be smaller. So the old one I think was like a quarter inch. I think now we went down to like eighth of an inch. So what this is, is this is stacks of crepe paper stitched together down the center, right? So it's, it's just sewn all the way down. And then all of those pieces are cut already on both sides, okay? And what you do with it is you take a piece, you decide how much you want of it. Let me grab a pair of scissors real quick. You cut it wherever you want, okay? Because it's stitched all the way down, you don't have to, you don't have to worry about anything, right? And then you don't have to wet it. You don't have to do anything. You just take it in your hands and you just start wrinkling up, kind of roll into a ball, like vintage festoon. Love it. When you roll it into a ball, you open it up and there's your fringe. And the cool thing is that you can keep rolling it up. Okay. You can also add some sort of cool elements to it. You'll see that Paula used the new uh, Distress Mica stain on it. So a little decayed on here, it gives it a cool look. And the nice thing is, is the more you work this stuff, the more wrinkly it gets and the softer it gets. So you can just keep working that and just again, roll it in your hands and it just creates the coolest look. You can glue it, to, you'll see it used in many makes different ways. It's just a great accent, also great just for home deck, right? You can use it just a, a, as like a little garland on, 
on a tablescape or a mantle, but it's very cool in your makes because of that crepe paper. Besides that it holds that cool shape, it doesn't just dissolve in your hands like the other stuff does. I love this stuff, right? And just, you know, spoiler alert, we also did this in cream for Christmas because it's just beautiful stuff. So you might want to kind of keep that in mind for, for your, your decor throughout the year. All right, put this back in, put this back. Wow. This, this box, this box is not going to get, this box is going to get used from many things. All right. These guys also made it back. So a shout out to Tammy B. Tammy B was the inspiration for this skew. These are drippy candles last year, huge hit. We sold out probably within the first week. Um, keep in mind, these are great for both Halloween and Christmas. So you're going to want to, you'll see the makes, uh, the makers will be probably using candles in Christmas as well. So Tammy B created these, uh, initially with paper and, and hot glue. And I'm like, they're so cool. And they're, they're fun to do, but they are time consuming. So I'm like, I really want to do these out of resin and it's like, go for it. So the cool thing about these, they are a resin candle. They come in three different sizes, right? In the package, it has a little wire wick. So this is actually a cloth wick with a little wire because it needed just a, a legit wick on it. Okay. Uh, already has that great grungy finish. So you can glue them. You can, you can still alter these and color them however you want, but they have a very realistic look. We did different designs of the drippy candles, so they're not all exactly the same, right? Uh, each one I initially just, I did them by hand following <laughs> Tammy's technique, and we sent them off to, to be molded up. So they're really cool. Then we have the candle stands. Now, these great metal pieces, you're gonna see some very clever uses this year for Halloween beyond just the candle stand. Everything from a stand for uh, the new skull, because the large skull, now it, it's proportionate where you can put the skull uh, on a stand, you can make cake plates out of it. But these drippy candles are designed to fit on these. Now, if you're gonna glue these on, my advice for 90% of your gluing is going to be distressed collage medium. That is my glue of choice. Most of the makers, it's their glue of choice. It's if my you, glue of choice. If, yeah, if you work with hot glue, especially when it comes to metals and resin, you just have to be careful because hot glue, uh, it's temperature sensitive and things just like to pop off. It might, it might glue right away, but then if you bump it, it's just going to fall off, right? So that's the nice thing about collage medium. It takes a while to dry. You just put it down, put it in its own goo. Uh, it'll grab probably within a minute, but then it will take, you know, maybe 15, 20 minutes before it's, it's ready to go. The other thing to keep in mind on the drippy candles, right? So if you have like some of the smaller drippy candles, if you wanted to say, put it on the skull head, because now you can, right? Because it's proportionate. The other one, the other one was just a little too small for that candle, although you could have. Um, but uh, a great tip is to glue it down still with, uh, with your collage medium, but then you can also go in with like a little bit of hot gluing and add some more drips and then do some paint. And yeah, there's a lot of fun things we can do with ideology. It's literally just a, a maker's playground. Okay. Some other things that came back. So happy ornate gates came back for another year. These are so cool. Where do you see what the makers did with these? I love when stuff comes back a second year, right? Because the makers do amazing things already. But then when it comes back like another time, I think they're just more inspired from the previous year that they just take things to a whole nother level, right? As far as their, their grungy and, and cool look goes. And then of course the locks and keys, these also came back, right? For another year. These are very cool. And, and people were surprised that, that these were seasonal because they're like, well, we can use them on all sorts of things. Yeah, you're right. They're not a functioning lock. It's just an embellishment, right? You can wire it on and use a jump ring or tie it on. Uh, but they're very cool to use even, believe it or not, for Valentine's Day, right? Like the key to my heart and you put it on a heart for Valentine's. So these are things, again, that you can, you can utilize well throughout the, uh, the year. Then these guys, word plaques, love these, right? has that raised letters, apothecary, found objects, curious things, and bone collector, right? I'd probably say that maybe three of these could be every day. I don't know, maybe bone collector could be every day, it just depends. But curious things, found objects definitely uh, play in, but they're just fun because you can alter these. They're made out of metal. Then some new stuff that we did in the world of metal. We did some new charms and it's kind of a little mix. So we did some bats. We've done bats in, in years past, but we wanted to bring this guy back and give you Two of them. Uh, we've also done this bat much longer in previous years. This is a nice size because he will fit on the vignette boxes, right? Or even that, that shrine, it's really cool. And then these new spiders, they're very detailed. They're cool little spiders. Take a look at these guys. All right, let me try to hold those up. So 
they're not flat. That's the beauty of these, right? So they're not like our previous spiders that were just smashed on the bottom. They have all this great detail. That little body is rounded so you can do alcohol ink or you can do paint on the body. And then it has that little jump ring, uh, that little loop so you can use a jump ring or you can use string, fishing line, whatever. And then it just has that opening at the bottom, right? We used to have a big spider like this. It had, I think, a little pearl in it. And we just took that design and shrunk it down. But beautiful. So you have bats and spiders in that one. And then these are shape seals. So these were inspired by last year when we did uh, the quote seals. So these look like wax seals, but they are metal. And it has that great skull and crossbones raised inside. Really uh, excellent to put uh, around a book or just as an embellishment. You can alter these. You can put these on with ribbon. They're just cool. They're, they're very weighty, but also uh, very unique. I think they'd also be cool as like wine charms. If you found like wine charms that had just some sort of flat disc, right? Even if the art was disgusting and glue these right over the top of it, right? So you'd still have that little ring. I think those would be great for, for a Halloween party. I just love it. I love the design of them. I think you can use them for many things if you're into skulls. Then we'll wrap up with the sweet stuff, right? Um, so the sweet stuff meaning, well, the cutesy stuff. And there is a, a cutesy softer side to ideology, right? Uh, first thing up are droplets. Now I know these are not new to the paper craft world, but one thing that I couldn't find out there were really grungy colors, right? And, and rightfully so. These are just uh, flat back little pearlized plastic domes, if you will, uh, that you can glue on with collage medium, glossy accents. You can put them on a lot of things. Well, you see how the makers used them ideology style. Um, in this pack, there is 192 pieces. So the finishes, this is what I really like. There are four sizes of them, right? But I like that we just did like a black pearl, a gunmetal, a little bit of a tarnished brown, and then more of like a sepia brown. So those are really the colors again, and they might exist out there. I've just not seen them. I've seen them really mostly in in nice, fun, bright colors. And I wanted to, to do a little vintage vibe, even though I know you could alcohol ink them. I'm like, wouldn't it be cool just to have them uh, and utilize them? So that's what we did for the droplets. And again, this is one of those skews that it's one year and uh, done. It's one and done. So these won't be back next year. Uh, even if they do well, they're just, they're not gonna be back. And I think they have, because I believe uh, Advantage is probably already out of those. But it's just one of those fun things to do. Then we have the confections. This, of course, is just great with that black and white twist. These uh, came back. We launched these last year. This is made out of a, a soft kind of a flexible clay, if you will. So you can glue them. You can cut them if you wanted to. So if you wanted to make them smaller size, you can trim them. Uh, and I love just the, the colors of these. You'll see the maker's color. And then, yes, candy corn. I know people have been eyeing this, and maybe you're getting a little hungry for candy corn. Come it, on it is, candy corn. It is it so is cute. Coolest. It is so cute. Made out of that same kind of clay material, so it has a little flex to it. Uh, they are all handmade, so they are perfectly imperfect. Just remember that. But great to use for a variety of your makes. I love candy corn, and I know that, you know, it, it's not a global thing, right? It's probably not even a U.S. thing. How many? It's like a love or hate thing with candy corn. But to me, candy corn is is Halloween. It is that season. So I love that addition. And you'll see from a scale perspective, like these scale with the other confections, they'll work in the candy bucket. They, they just have such a, a great, cute thing. So uh, they are made out of a type of clay, right? But they're, they're hand shaped. So they have that great little soft rounded look to them, right? Very authentic. So that is the, the ideology uh, release that has, that is launched for this year. But I also wanted to take you through some things and share uh, with you like maybe what, what didn't make it back. I'm gonna hand this box over to you, Mario. Got Thank it. you very much. You're welcome. That's excellent. Thanks, and then I'll give you this when you come back. So, cool. Thank you, there you go. There's that, appreciate it. All right, let me bring this in. So these are some things uh, just to talk about kind of how ideology works. So sometimes something will uh, come out of the season uh, and do really well that we put it in the everyday line. This being one of them, right? Baseboard window frames. We did this um, for Halloween last year and it was so successful we kept it for Christmas and now we made it an everyday SKU. So if you're looking for these because maybe you bought them for one of the seasons, I just wanted to let you know that they're now part of the everyday line so you can uh, just use them in your everyday makes. They're part of the line. They're just called baseboard window frames. Very great SKU. Another one that came out at Halloween, but we put it in every day. These are the ephemera snippets. This is called Curator. They're all of these wonderful little 
uh, handwritten labels and all these great colors that could work in junk journals and bottles and all sorts of things. So again, sometimes that SKU just, we see the possibility. It's really not sales related, believe it or not, um, because we have to decide this well before uh, we see how, how sales are. It's just how things are used. So I, when we saw how the makers were just using these for, for everything and same with this, it was like, okay, there's, there's the possibility of these going in like the everyday line, right? So those did. Um, just like this one, we did a lantern, right? This is now part of the everyday line, one of my favorites. I love this lantern because uh, it is a, it's a metal lantern, right? With acrylic, so you can paint this, use your distress embossing glaze. Uh, Tammy B just did a make where she did like that blue and white kind of flecked like enamel wear. It, it's very, very cool. It's got a, a wire handle. This acrylic top though is it's actually hollowed on the inside. So if you look at the bottom, there is a hole and a little notch in the bottom. This was so you could light it up with Ideology Tiny Lights. So although Tiny Lights have a, a bunch of lights on there, which I know people just have an issue with, they're designed to be trimmed to whatever size you need them to be. And I don't know why people think that, oh, but I have all these lights and it's just gonna waste them. It's like, but you're using the light for what you want it to be. It's no different than going to the store and buying a cord with a single bulb on the end or buying a strand of Christmas lights, right? This is how they come, so it allows you to trim it. So all I did was really trim it down to Three, three lights, right? So I trimmed it down so I had three little lights and then I just wrapped them together because they're wire and you can, you can trim the tiny lights just so this will fit up inside that little hole into the lantern. So you can kind of fill that, that little place. Then the wire can come out of that little notch in the back. So if you were gonna glue it onto something and then your make would be able to light up, right? So you can light up your lantern, you can light this up uh, clear or green or purple or whatever you wanted depending on your tiny lights and then obviously you can hide this in your make but it's just nice because the tiny lights have that replaceable uh, batteries just very it's very cool yeah it's really fun so that's part of the everyday line and then these guys laboratory part of the everyday line have a great science vibe these are glass little beakers uh, just some fun things and you'll see the makes used with that but then with the good there's always things that well don't make it back they just They've been around and sometimes it's your favorite, sometimes it's not. This one, no surprise, right? The skulls and pumpkins, again, we've done these for years. We've done them as individual skulls, individual pumpkins. We did a combo pack last year, but this particular, now you can see how they're just a little flatter, right, than the, than the new ones. Um, but these just didn't go. Now, when I'm telling you that these didn't come back, what I can say from just seeing people out there is that it's really important to, to know that because something doesn't come back from the brand doesn't mean it's not still out there in the wild. So there's many retailers that, that bought up uh, Halloween stock and still have Halloween stock from last year. So don't give up the hope if you want it. I would suggest looking for it, right? So like, an, again, another favorite, Gothic Frames. These are resin. I did uh, some fun makes at Christmas last year with these where you can make great ornaments. These were a Halloween launch. These didn't come back this year. So uh, really fun to, to paint and alter, right? The Gothic frames. These guys, the crossbones, right? A favorite embellishment, didn't come back. Nope. So if you just like the crossbones and I love them, uh, I bought a, a bunch of packs, so I'm good, didn't I, right? Yeah, I know, I see, yes, Hoarders Unite, you're right. I did buy up a lot of these, because I liked them. I like them for a lot of things, right? Um, so, has a yeah. stock. see, there's, there's gonna be a lot of retailers, so just boop, boop. check with them, don't, don't give it up right? These mini flare, I love these. I love taking those little bits of ephemera and putting them on those buttons. They didn't have a pin back, but you glue them on. Uh, these didn't make it back, sadly, uh, but I liked them. I really did. They were really expensive to make, but I thought they were so cool uh, to glue and add on things. Like I love the eye and the moon and, but yeah, they did not make it. Another thing that didn't make it, these guys. So I talked about these, right? These seals. So these are the ones that have the quote, but this year we did the same seal, but with that raised uh, skull and crossbones. I love this, but maybe it's because you can't really read them at shelf level, but if you put crayon inside, like distressed crayon, then you could. You know, you never know why something maybe doesn't do well, but I thought they were creepy cool, right? Something wicked this way comes. Yeah, just, they're fun, but yeah, didn't make it. Paula said, I love mini flare. I'm crying about that. I know, I know, because she sent a make where she's like, I use these on my cards, and it's like, yeah, because she used them last year. It's, yeah, some things are just out of our control. If if they don't, if it does not sell or it doesn't, doesn't do well, that's it. It doesn't come back. It's, it's, it's as simple as that. It's a simple conversation. 
Um, birdcage. I love this. This is a very cool, and you'll see uh, Zoe did a make with the birdcage. Really fun for Halloween because you could put the lock in and key on this. You can put things inside. You can, we saw it last year filled with eyeballs and all sorts of things because you could use wire cutters and, and cut some of these bars and put a skull in there. Very cool. Didn't come back. Amazing detail made out of metal. And then, well, this is the one I'm crying about, literally. Can you believe it? Creepy eyes did not come back. Oh my gosh. Now I stocked up because I like creepy eyes. I do. They're fun. Um, I actually just saw a make that uh, Nina Marie did with Otis and she put these eyes on them. They're just, they're fun and creepy and cool, but well, they just, they didn't make the cut, which is sad. And I'll, I'll even tell you, I don't even know what year, and I'm not sure if Sharon is watching, but she might know the year. So this was when we launched the stamp set, uh, Dearly Departed with Stampers Anonymous has that face, that cool flower. This was Sharon's card that she did for Stampers Anonymous. And I loved how she cut out that layered face and did the creepy eye. And I just said like, I have to keep this card. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it other than hold it and look at it. But really, I, cause there's no, there's no year on it. I don't know when it was made, whenever that stamp set came out, but man, how cool is that? So if you had that stamp set, Really, just having a stash of eyes for that, very cool, right? So just things to keep in mind that, you know, I think sometimes we just think, oh, it'll be back next year. You know, I'll just get a pack. Maybe, and then maybe not. And by the time you know it's the maybe not, then, you know, you're buying it on eBay for stupid money. So bye I bye. would I would check, <laughs> Mario's like, bye-bye. I would check your retailers first because uh, like Mario said, uh, Michelle has it and I'm sure there's many retailers that, that have it or have something, maybe even some stuff that some. was even older than before, right? Cameos or things. So, okay, let's get into it, shall we? Let's let's talk about stuff. Let's get, you can take that too. Okay, so thanks okay. Mario. You All right, here we go. So first thing I'm gonna talk about is just, I wanted to bring this back in uh, before I really get into the mix, just to talk about the, the bubbles, right? Because you're gonna see them used in a very creepy way uh, because, well, it's a Halloween launch. But when we did these barrels, so this resin barrel, this is part of the everyday line. Uh, when these came out at the beginning of the year, I made this little sample and to me it was worth kind of bringing back to remind you that you can take an everyday vessel like this and give it a seasonal look. So to me, those bubbles are perfect for this because you can glue them on and make something uh, fun for, you know, again, a decor piece or if you're doing a vignette or you're doing a little garden. These I just glued with glossy accents so it would dry crystal clear and shiny. You could use collage medium. It will dry clear, but matte. So because I wanted the shine, I use glossy accents. And a little trick that I did in every single one of these barrels, I also do it when I do jack-o'-lanterns or anything, is find yourself a little, a little stash of these, right? This is a little styrofoam ball. It's a little one inch styrofoam ball. It's the crunchy kind. I like the crunchy kind versus the hard kind because you can find two different types of of styrofoam. One is kind of like what they make a cooler out of, which is really hard. And then this is that crunchy one. See, you can hear it. There you go. You kind of heard it. So you can smash it. What's nice about this is this is what I put in the barrels or the, the jack-o'-lantern candy bucket to fill in the space because then I don't use so much stuff and you don't see it. I mean, it's under there, but you just, you don't notice it. It also allows you to stick things into it, right? Like uh, the, the toadstools. So just a little tip. I hot glue that into the bottom right? Because hot glue and styrofoam, they just kind of, they like each other, they eat each other up. And then I just add things. This is the ideology bouquet. Again, you're going to see a lot of things made uh, using this. This is an everyday skew. These are paper flowers, part of the ideology line. There's a bazillion of them in here. You take your favorite inks, your favorite oxides, and they take color beautifully because they are paper. So you're going to see some black flowers and purple and creepy uh, all using this. Toadstools, also something uh, that is in the everyday line, right? They already come just like this. Of course, you can paint them, but they already come kind of grungy finished. There are the pumpkins. You can paint the pumpkins. You don't have to keep them orange, glued in there. And then, of course, the woodland trees that we bring out at Christmas that you can put in a barrel. So just wanted to give you those ideas as we go into Halloween, because I think it's important to kind of break that up so you don't just think like, oh, I don't want to get my creep on. I'm over this. Oh. You could be selling yourself short on the inspiration, right? Okay, we ready to go, Mario? Ready, ready. Great, let me take this. Okay, so we're gonna start <laughs> with a make from last year. So uh, I asked Paula to send it back because I loved it and it was one of those things that inspired other products, right? So the vignette card file, so this really, 
isn't one, okay? It, she created one. So Paula took a vignette box and, and added little dividers in there. Um, you know, had Jay cut, cut the wood and glue that in. And I'm like, that, that's really cool. And she's like, this should be a product. This make inspired that vignette card file, right? So it's a little, it's a little smaller box, not as wide. It has, it comes with a, like a label pull hardware, but that's the thing about inspiration that sometimes when we see the makes or how makers utilize something, it could spark an idea for another product, right? Tammy B's drippy candles, uh, this, that to me is the best. Yeah, this is where Chris, Chris has said it's his favorite part. This is where Chris gets to see all this art that he does on screen, like actually come to life where he's like, why do you want that drip there? Oh, I get it. So the, the thing to, to remember is that you can now get that file box and create this make much easier than, than building your own box. But you can see the importance of those papers, right? So this is, really important to understand the authenticity of it because this looks like a cigar box because of the papers that we use all of these cards right the paper dolls there's the flare that's why paula's crying the curator label uh the sticker book the portraits you can just see a lot of great stuff that we've had in years past and why we even bring it back right why we bring back some ephemera right the smaller photos like i love those little stickers look how she just added a little color to his cheeks right the clipping stickers those splash cards using the tiny clips, right? Taking backdrops, you can sew them. I think that, look there again. See, now you, I think you're gonna all be crying about that mini flare. See, sometimes you just don't get it until you see it. And then when you see it, then you get it, but then you can't get it. It's, it's the circle. It's the vicious circle of, of makers, right? But I love just seeing uh, how previous makes, to me, one, they're timeless. Two, it inspires so many different types of products that, that we can bring out, right? And that's why it's also great to collect ephemera because some pieces we have and some pieces we didn't simply because we needed to make room for more. But I love how Paula can add a little splash of color to all of these. There's those little masks that I told you about that are in the sticker book that you can put onto the paper dolls. I mean, how amazing is that? So good, right? And if you like to sew, just sewing some things on, even though these are collage, these are all collage with collage medium. Again, Distress Collage Medium. It comes in this little squirt bottle, which is my favorite for gluing things. And then it also comes in the tub for brushing it on. So to me, I, I kind of need it both because this has a nice little detail applicator. But just some, some cool inspiration. I know this is one of Paula's favorite uh, paper dolls. Look at that, the girl with the bunny, crazy. But you can see why I just said, you gotta send it back. She's like, yeah, but it's not the right size box or the cards. I'm like, but the inspiration alone is timeless. Even, even if you're seeing like tinted paper dolls for the first time, right? Or now you see how you wanna use up the, that mini flare, right? But just very, very cool make. So thanks for sending that, Paula. We'll get onto the new stuff, but I needed to, to share that, that classic paper. So now we'll get, into, we'll get into the new Paula. This is Paula's make for, uh, for this year's ideology. And what's interesting, and I always say this in a live that, you know, the makers all have this box of stuff. And it's very interesting that there's a lot of similarities sometimes that come from makers where they maybe chose a, a specific substrate that, or a structure that was very different uh, that we really didn't see a lot. And then all of a sudden, many makers are using it. And this is one of those structures. It's, a, it's an everyday one that we launched uh, at the beginning of the year. It's called an accordion folio. And I think it's important to often see a make because we can only do so much in the packaging, right? We can only put so much inspiration there to kind of show you the build. But when you look at it, it looks pretty boring. There's not much else we can do to it because that's what it is. But its possibility, its potential is unbelievable because what's cool about this folio, it is, it just starts out as, as mixed media heavy stock. If you're familiar with the mixed media heavy stock, that's what this is made out of. So the same source that Ranger gets it, uh, Advantas gets it well, from the same supplier. So it's going to take your inks exactly how uh, the tags and all of that does. But this book, it comes with this, this piece of twill that you could ink, you can stamp, or you can not use. Paula just use ribbon. You don't have to use it. But everything has already been pre-cut and it already has your score lines because this is all gusseted. And this, we start out with just like an open structure so you can go in and collage and ink and stamp with ease. We didn't want to do anything to, to kind of limit that. So here you can see uh, this one is all done with the new, the new collage paper, right? So see all those flowers and the music. So all that color around it, the gate, that flower, that's all collage paper, just collage medium, put that down, collage medium. And then Paula 
put some ink on there and smears it around with some collage medium as well. So your imagery, like I mentioned, becomes translucent on that structure. Okay. So by having it open, it allows you to like do the entire piece at one time before you decide how to build it. Also inside is this single accordion book. So it doesn't have any, any seams to it. Like it's one long piece, one continuous piece that is cut, right? It has that gradation. So it gives you that little zigzag. You can see how that just goes down, but again, inkable and all that. So I wanted to show you the base structure because when you see the transformation in these makes, you're going to be like, what is that? It started as this, the makes that I'm going to talk about started as this accordion folio. All right. So with that, let's open it up. So she did some beautiful ribbon. Look at that mica stain on there. Let's just note that ribbon. No doubt it's decayed. I know Paula loves, loves that decayed. So you can see on here, there's that little spider, right? Little curious things. Those are uh, those word plaques. Remember you can paint them. You can go over it with some uh, metallic, whether you want to do foundry wax or metallic mixative or alloy, there's many metallic options. I love how she used the droplets, right? And then here she used the mini hardware heads. There's the bouquet. So you can see the flower and then there's that transparency. So you might think, well, why transparency? If you're not going to see through it, it's going to add some shine. It's going to add a whole different look like it's maybe behind some, some glass. And that's what I love about the little flowers and the clips as well. Tiny little things. But then when we open it, oh my gosh. Now, remember, I haven't seen these, so I just can't wait. It's just going to be fun. You're going to have to just, you have to humor me and deal with me gushing because I love seeing the brilliance of ideas. So first this opens, right? And the whole idea behind this is that it has these other flaps. So that first one had a full flap. Here you can see she cut it. She cut it so she can have a little, a little reveal. You can do that. This other one also folded over, but then she just stitched it together, did a little eyelet to make a pocket. So even though everything starts open, that's when you get to customize it. You get to seal things for a pocket, cut things for a reveal. And then this also is going to fold down. But if you look at uh, the foundation here, I mean, look at how beautiful that collage paper is because you can just mix and match how you do it. Okay. First, first we're going to talk about this. I got to go back to that. That is hilarious where she just used the, the legs of the paper doll. Chris would be like, well, we should just do that. Chris has always wanted to do parts and pieces of paper dolls. Let's be clear. He has. He's wanted to do that. And I think that's really clever just to do uh, that. There you can see the remnant rubs, right? How great they work on things. The end. Then when you open it up, we've got this pocket. Those are those stickers. Remember when I talked about the little half skulls, how they fit over that sticker book? Uh, I think I kind of came in on that Zoom when, when Paul and Chris were having too much fun putting skull heads on things. And then we've got the little mask, the stickers, and then you can just create a card. I love the coloring job that Paula always does with the paper dolls, layering it with ephemera, the clipping stickers, and just adding that little bit of sewing right there, right? So just using layers because that's that whole book right there as that little pocket, okay? Then we've got this one, again, adding some color to the ephemera. There's that little stitch. Yeah, Chris is like, I'm on that. Uh, then you can see in here, I just like how clever to use that little tiny clip, right? And this is what I was saying up here. Do you see this stuff? Mummy cloth right? When you see all that, those little frayed pieces of, of threads, that's mummy cloth where you can still clip it on there and then just fray it. So it's one of those things that you've probably seen in more makes throughout the year than you realize, but that's that Halloween stuff that we bring out. I love the remnant rubs over this guy, that coloring, sewing the little pocket. I like that she just clipped on this little butterfly. So you've got something that goes into a pocket and eccentric, but very peculiar gentleman. That's the fun thing about Halloween clippings. And then we have this book. So this of course is the other exciting thing about uh, this. Oh, that's brilliant. Okay. So remember when I opened the original one and it's that long accordion, right? So look how Paula took the accordion, but then just added that little strip of paper to just create the book. And by doing so created pockets. Okay. So if you don't want to have that long accordion coming out, just add that little bit to the spine. And now you've created a pocket here and a pocket here, wherever those papers uh, fold into one another. Very clever. But you can see all of the wonderful detail of the paper dolls, the ephemera, those little reveals, right? We just love adding names, right? A little Rosalie. It's adorable. Great little spots on her dress. A ladybug, right? See, and all that stuff. Mummy cloth. Probably say that. The word of the day is mummy cloth. Love the little tag, little aisle. It, 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 well, it just, it just, yeah. I have been watching too much Password. 
that's such a great show. All right. Another one, again, look at, look at pieces for what they are, right? How you add things. So Dorothy liked anything spooky. I love that she's got that, that raven that we have in ephemera, right? Just kind of sitting in her hand on her shoulder. Hilarious. There's a little piece of the layers, right? That, that curtain that I talked about, right? Little card, just so many cool pieces, seeing it all come together, right? Getting the creep. Oh my gosh, look how she used the skull as a balloon, that skull head freaking brilliant. Things are not what they seem. See? Oh, maybe those are his legs. I'm not sure. Maybe not. Curious. Yeah. But see, what a brilliant idea for the skull to turn it into a balloon. These are the ideas. This is where you're like, skull sticker, balloon, right? Mummy cloth, threads. Just ideas, 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 right? Oh, look at that. A little shout out to Wicked, the best show on Broadway. Um, Love that. So see how she just put that little slice in the sticker, right? See that little cut right there? Side that in. Yeah. A little alphabet right there. A little green. Good coloring right there. And that is from our metallic stickers. Uh, it's not even the Halloween sticker book. So that's really cool to utilize that. Isn't that cool? That so so awesome. good. Oh, brilliant. So all of that fun little detail packed into uh, the folio. That's the fun thing about a make is that you can take a structure that's part of the everyday and just really uh, enjoy making it. So maybe you are into journals or maybe you're just kind of starting uh, and you're like, I don't really know even how to build one. Having the foundation of that is really what's going to get you started, right? So, so good. Love it. Beautiful. See, I don't even tie bows anymore. Certainly not on camera. I try to. Yeah, Mario will do that. All right. This next one, okay, I want to make sure I'm going to light it up. All right, so this one is from Emma, right? Take a look at this. I'm going to light it up, right? Because we got tiny lights back there, tiny lights for the wind. So we're going to turn that on. Look at that beautiful glow. This is what's cool about those purple lights. It's almost like a black light, okay? So that is why we want to do them for Halloween. They're, they are, it's a fabulous color. It's just so good. And it shows up really, really purpley on, on camera, but it is kind of that purpley black light. So this is the new uh, vignette arched shrine. So you can see by, by redefining this shape, it just gave the makers more play area down here because that coffin just came in so narrow. It was very hard to build, right? So Emma just did such a, a cool storyline in here. First, we'll take a look at the outside where we've got that worn wallpaper going around, right? Little hardware heads ideology, mini hardware. There's mummy cloth again, but used in a totally different way, inked and twisted and glued down. So it just gives it like this really kind of uh, gnarly, gauzy lace. I was telling you, I almost called this skew, oh my gauze, instead of mummy cloth, but advances didn't really like that. But I liked it, I love the name. So take a look at the, this top layer. So these right here, these are the et cetera trims, right? So there's no shelf in this particular piece. The wood pieces that come with this that are kind of rattling around are for the base. You can see that, see those two wood panels right there? So those pieces that come with this are designed to, to create that base where you can glue them and stack them. Um, you could, I suppose, cut it and make a shelf, but these are the et cetera trims from Stampers Anonymous. I love the drippy candles. And this is what I was saying about when you're using candles, take that tip from Tammy B, get your hot glue gun, add some extra wax drippage with your glue gun, use a little antique linen distress paint to blend it in, a little walnut stain distress crayon to add some grunge and you're on your way. There is that, that candle stand with the new skull. There, I'm gonna just tip it so the light hits it. Isn't that, oh, so good, right? Fabulous, and then, no, no, I was just, I was actually getting more light just to show that, but thanks. So here you can see the paper dolls. There's our gate. So I'm just gonna hold it up upright so you can see Emma added a little chain. There's the key right here with a little tag. Here's the gate with some grunge. There's a little lock that goes on there. So the, the ornate gates, you can use them together if you want. You'll see some makes where they're used together. Uh, but just using one piece, you can also do that. Then you'll see some of the books because we have the little book covers in the ephemera where you can make mini books. The little tiny vials where there's like potion dripping down. I love just, see, that's what's creepy about those stickers, right? Vanishing visitors. And then you look inside, there's a little frame, right? Little ideology deco frame, little cracked mirror back there, right? Using some of the translucent crackle. Just so many details. There's a little chain and key back there, like she's a little keeper of the chain. Look at him. He's hanging out behind her. He's like, no way. Either that or he's the one holding the hatchet. Could go either way, right? And look at that little spider. See that, see that little bit of color right there? How the light's hitting that little bit of that spider body, beautiful, just beautiful work. But look at how that light just 
it's so good so so good what a cool make right a lot of fun so having that structure really allows you just to to let your imagination go run wild and just have have play time that to me is is the best part of it look at that little tiny clip in red you see it right there that's a little ideology so good the details right i agree the details are fabulous there's like a little there's a little stick back there i see it all right so good ah another great one so this one vicky created so this is the curio clock for halloween so you can see that shiny black finish and i love that because vicky took on this challenge because you know she really likes to get her grunge on like the rest of us she's like how am i going to grunge up a shiny clock i'm like oh you're going to figure it out and look she she certainly did here's what's brilliant about this she makes this look like it's just been like riveted together and kind of assembled and then she created like a rusty finish over the shine so the clock itself still has that wonderful uh, shine for the halloween clock I, that's what i love about it i do um, the backs come off of the curio clock. There's no glass in these, a completely reimagined clock than the assemblage clock, right? Uh, this ring pops out, so you can also antique this. But take a look at what she used those droplets for. How perfect are those droplets to create these really dimensional rivets, way more dimensional than hardware heads, right? So when you look at these and you're like, oh, I don't want any blingy, pearly stuff. I told you, you're going to be surprised of how makers use them with ideology, that it's not just always shine and bling this has an industrial vibe but yeah that that little rust texture on that it just gave this clock a whole little level of creep then when we get down here and you see found objects right vicky is no stranger to a dremel tool she took that bat adornment sliced it right cut that metal and then just extended the wings on the outside and again use those little droplets to look like it's been attached with rivets on there but really, well, I don't want to show the mechanics, but yeah, the bat wings just sliced in half, but what a cool piece to really finish off the bottom of that. Same thing with the gates, right? The gates are inside this clock, but she, she cut the gates with the Dremel tool. I love how she used the design tape, right? Just to wrap around the gates, right? Day or night orders attended to, like you're going into a cemetery. And I'm just going to tip it this way. So more light shines in on the clock. We've got the candy bucket, there's some candy corn in there, like you're just, you're tempting the children in there. But believe it or not, there are two little kids in there. One, he's got a skull head, right? And the other one, he also has, I'm just trying to tip it. He has a skull head, he's back there, but I'm trying to show off his shirt. I'm sure Vicky's gonna photograph it. But if you look in between the bars, she used a skull remnant rub on his sweater, I see. So he's got like a little rocker sweater on, just so cool. The moon in there, right? from layers it's just there's so many details there's drippy candles in there so it's it's just a creepy cool vessel for halloween that's what i like about that clock the clock makes it again if you don't want to uh, attempt anything so big like a vignette having this clock it really allows you to build from the inside or the outside because like i said this back easily pops off so you can do all of your papering uh, all of your layering in there and then just push that on the top but i love how she used the lock and see again because she's not not afraid to cut she just sliced that lock because you can cut through the metal with, uh, with the Dremel. Really cool. I love the finish, right? The detail of that, see, impressive. Impressive, 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 okay? So good, so, so good. All right, Susie created this. This is another one of those structures that I love. It's part of the everyday line and I don't think it gets enough love because it's such a great structure to make on. This is the Ideology uh, mini clipboard, okay? So it comes plain like this, right? And this has hitch fasteners actually. It comes where you can unscrew this and actually remove the clip. So most of the time when you, if you bought a clipboard, you have to kind of work around that, that clip and it's really shiny. This is already uh, plated, right? So it has that antique finish. You take this off, but now we could paper or collage the whole back and then reattach this clip. If you wanted the clip to be red, you could paint it, spray paint it, do whatever, because it comes off of the clipboard. Uh, and that's what I love about this. It's a mini clipboard. And Susie did a great job just kind of uh, telling a story here. So you can see if I hold this up, we've got just that great look of all of the detail. I love the bat right here on the top of that frame. Not a great detail. That is a wonderful, wonderful detail. Would you agree, Mario? Yes, of course, he agrees. Yeah, he doesn't know what I'm talking about. Um, he will, he'll get it in a second. Then we've got all the baseboard pieces, the dearly departed. You can see back there, the paper dolls. Here's a little bit of that that fringe, right? So see, just adding a little bit of fringe to that is perfect. We've got a skull. And then I love how Susie just added the little key and the spider with, with some chain, just pinned it on with a loop pin. 
eyelets. You can see a lot of makes have eyelets, right? Eyelets coming back. Just really, really good. But this whole thing is just about a story, right? Because you can see that she's there and uh, her husband is, is a skull head, dearly departed. But then when you take off the clip, right, that reveals the whole other panel, right? There he was. That was obviously him. He was a, he was a physician. No longer, right? You can see the layers. I love how she used both of the layers. So one layer goes that way. One layer goes that way. Uh, and because they're each piece, you can overlap them like this, or you can create a, a much bigger scene with those. But really, really uh, clever of how she just told the story by taking the layers. Now, do you get it? No, I know okay. what you're talking about. Uh, and then we've got just, I love the whole x-ray, the x-ray thing. Yeah. Just a, it's a great make, a great make for a clipboard. So again, you may have seen this. Maybe you haven't even seen these. This has been in the line for years is the everyday line. It's a great foundational make because it can sit on an easel, hang on the wall, but always, I think the interactive idea of this is very, very cool because it looks finished and then it just has that surprise reveal, right? And, the, and using those baseboard frames, right? See that chipboard? That's what's giving that whole front layer all that dimension, right? I love this, Susie. So, so good. I love so being good. Part of it. <laughs> yes. Yes, you do. All right. So, when you think of ideology, you don't always have to think of vignettes or books or anything. Even if you just like to make cards or you like to do note cards or scrapbook pages, don't underestimate the power of amazing imagery. So Sharon created these cards using all sorts of different uh, backdrops. So these are the great papers, the ideology backdrops. Then you can see paper dolls, layers, stickers, just utilizing these to create Halloween cards. So this could be an invitation. This could be anything just by taking what you love of card making, right? Maybe it's gluing, maybe it's sewing, maybe it's layering, maybe it's a little foam tape and still create some really cool and creepy cards. Again, even if it's not Halloween, right? Just a fun card to a friend that's getting into mischief. Who knows, right? I love the idea of, of always seeing a different approach. And I know we, we often challenge Sharon of like, you know, kind of keep that card making vibe and let's see what you can do uh, with ideology. And we always love that, that part of it, just to show that it's not just about, you know, boxes and trinkets. Sure, that's fun, but there's also uh, so much that goes into the detail, coloring, scale of, of the paper products we do that just seeing them used, like that's, that's also where the magic is. Very cool card, Sharon. Then we have a book. So uh, Susie and Marlise, they, they do all sorts of crazy books. And it, I mean, every single time we do uh, books from them, they just they continue to surprise me with things because this was a box and Paula's like, no, it, it's actually a book. So um, this is the vignette box. So this is the square vignette. We did square vignette boxes this year, as well as the rectangle ones. You can see it's got all sorts of cool grime, right? Some great crackle paste, some splatter, some paper all the way around, just a cool, uh, collage aesthetic. Then on the front, you can see the baseboard window frames, right? So utilizing those from before, there's the transparent wings, right? Those great bat wings, a uh, little splatter. I love how she used the droplets in the eyes of that, that skull baseboard, right? There's a little clip. There's the found objects. Again, what do we have? Ooh, mummy cloth. Yes. Uh, tied onto the found objects, a little grunge. Then she created a chipboard cover on this box. And then when we have this chipboard cover, you just open it up to reveal more magic. So inside we've got all these great paper pieces of our backdrops, and then we've got this, right? So the cool thing about this, the whole entire book is built inside this box and it's attached to the box, okay? So here you can see all of the paper and I love how she just uses in uh, all of the threads and just kind of leaves them there just for the added effect. But the book itself comes out kind of accordion style from this box. It's attached to the back of the box. Here you can see the papers. You can see the paper doll. You can see the layers, the stickers, a uh, little clip, right? Some remnant rubs in there. And each piece is just super unique. I love this. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to open it. Mm, I don't know. Maybe I'm going to see. Oh, it's Velcro. Good. It's going to be like, cause Velcro, you know, it's going to have that ripping sound. Um, look at that. I hope I can open it. Yep. Look at that little reveal right there. Very cool, right? I love that. And then we've got this. Oh, that's where the clip is. See, I never really know with Marlies. It's all like, you know, little ingenuity things. There's that clip. That's a removable card. We've got these pieces. Again, just taking a look at uh, those stickers. So you can go ahead and fussy cut these or just use 
uh, the paper dolls and cut them off at the shoulders to create a little little torso piece. I love that. That's a clever reveal. Then again, a little mummy cloth as she stitches each panel. Another little card piece here, another little pocket here. And then when we open it up further, right? And mind you on the back is all the great papers, right? So when you see this, right, obviously that was the top, but you can see all those great backdrops and just how they're torn and stitched together. So then we have this piece. So take a look again, another, another reveal. I can tell that I'll untie. There's the eyelets right there. Mummy cloth holding this, and then we'll just open this up. I love all the layers. So here you can see the transparency, right? So you may not notice it when it's down, but when you open it, then you see the light coming through. I love just using the little bits of tags, how she has those in there. There's another great card. So your cards could be just great inclusion pieces, pieces that are, that are just tucked in and hidden. And whether you're gluing things on, right? Whether you're stitching things together, you can just collage however you want. Some like to, to layer, some like to sew, some like to use different kind of mediums. There's all sorts of cool things that you can do uh, just with these pieces and hide those in the page. And then the bottom part, because it is attached to there, I'm gonna take this guy. He sits up in the box, which I think is really brilliant. So she sized him to where he can sit up. So if, you, if you're looking at this on display, you can have this whole entire book sitting out. There we go put that card in there because this would be under here. This would be tied up. And then he's just kind of sitting up. Very, very cool idea. And then you have another removable card in here with that game wheel, the paper doll, the raven, the card, just a lot of cool, fun things. So much work goes into these makes. Unbelievable details. And I know that the makers, so many of them, um, really, besides giving up all the time to make, throughout the season, they post on their blogs, Instagram, and share a lot of these details. Many of them do YouTube walkthroughs of a lot of their detailed books. So as always, I encourage you to follow the makers, check them out because you know you could really uh, kind of get a little behind the scenes of, of what makes them tick when it comes to creating these. I love the use of the design tape on the edge of that vignette, but great way to use paper. I can see why so many people love the, the junk journaling. It's just very therapeutic when it comes to just adding pieces, adding pieces, and just building on top. But I love the clever way of using all these. Marley's just it's brilliant. I'll tuck that back in. Look, I think I got everything in there. I do love all the threads. See, it's just added, added fun, right? Great use for a box. Such a great surprise to take a vignette and then just have that surprise book that just keeps like going and going, right? Love it. I love all the splatter too. So to me, it's like, I can just ooh and ah over this front cover the whole time, right? How the paper is torn, how things are stitched, how things are inked, how things are splattered and layered. So any idea, even if you like the composition of something, remember that. That to me is, is where the inspiration lies. All right. We doing okay, Mario? Doing great. Okay. Then we're going to get into, ooh, some, some display. So display domes, another uh, thing in ideology that I absolutely love. So ideology display domes are little glass domes that have a cork this is a make that zoe did uh last year and i asked her if i could keep it because well it lights up and there's a candy corn tree inside so that's a little ideology woodlands that she uh, inked candy corn there's our jack-o-lantern in there uh the candy the confections you can colorize the confections just using any alcohol marker right a copic or anything like that and you can color directly on those clay so remember those were the black and white candy six she just went in you know, use a marker and just add that little bit of color. I love the bones in there, right? That's why it doesn't have candy corn because this was last year. I'm sure she would have <laughs> added candy corn to it as well. And I love how she used the, the little cork vial back there and just cut up those little pieces of candy. But again, tiny lights that just go right up through the cork because you can drill through it and then you have a little illuminated candy corn tree that you can turn on and off. Cute, so I did keep that make. I did because I really like it, but this year, she created a, a dome with a completely different kind of storyline. And I love just kind of the, the eeriness of it. So uh, this had some trouble in transit. So we had to, we kind of had to kind of reassemble, uh, but we've got this great just metal base. So you can take just any kind of this from a jelly jar, right? So you can find a vintage thing. It still has the cork base. There's mummy cloth. There's that cool shape seal with a little grunge. And I love how Zoe did the skull with the crown right? Very Hamlet. Very cool. Uh, there's the candle stand with the drippy candle, right? A little chain. There's a little stack of books. So I love those little paper books. The makers are making those books. Ephemera has a little book covers and you can create and, and make those. And then you can see 
just the broom and how cool it is just to, you know, have, have all of that, the little bits and pieces of that broom just, I don't know, to me, that's what I love about seeing what makers are going to do, right? So taking that broom and just creating that whole movement in it, instead of just like, here's a broom sticking up against the wall, right? And then some bone pieces, because again, the bones, you can cut them with the scissors because they're just made out of a, a soft resin and stick those in. It just has a very cool, uh, beautiful Gothic vibe. So I love it. And then mummy cloth, just inked. Cool, cool make, cool dome. Love it. It's what it's all about. Ideas, 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 right? That is a special dome. Another idea. It is a special dome. This is a vignette that Paula created. So again, our square vignettes. I love this shape. I do because the square vignettes, there are three different sizes that, that come in the package. So here you can see the vignette. She did the worn wallpaper around it. There are some tiny lights, right? But not only that, but I love how she's got the wallpaper and I love how she has just that little scrap coming around the back. Isn't that cool? Like, why not just add that little surprise? Because when you turn it over to turn on the tiny lights, you can see it's got that really great green glow. Okay. So here she created like a, a carnival, a carnival theme. And I love the top because this is in the baseboards, right? For skill and amusement only. You can see the hardware head. So it really gives it that, that riveted grungy look. Here we can see the Stampers Anonymous, et cetera, trim. And now you can appreciate those layers, right? So those pieces, like I mentioned, you can cover a lot of area or you can crisscross it. Chris did so much work on these. These had statues and all sorts of stuff we didn't want. And man, if you see like what they were and what he did, he transformed them to exactly what we wanted. So totally worth it, right, Chris? I, I hope he agrees because it's very cool. If you look back there, you can see, see that little bit of tinsel I was talking about? So just tucking it behind the curtain just gives that little bit of sparkle. See what I mean? So it doesn't have to look like a Chia Pet on your make. You can trim some of it off. You can have as much of it revealed as you want. The tiny lights, I love how it just highlights that baseboard, that little uh, game wheel, right? So we have that baseboard piece and the layers. There you can see the paper dolls where it's tinted. I love the skull sticker on his sweater, his little mask. And then take a look at this brilliance right here. Look at that. She freaking made apples out of bubbles. Do you see that? Okay. So these are alcohol inked red. I've seen a lot, but the, this is brilliant. Red bubbles. So this is done with alcohol ink and glued on little tiny sticks. You guys see that little sticks onto each one. Oh my gosh. And then little leaves that alone, that must've been like hours, but I love how she has it in that resin barrel. So they're bobbing for apples at the carnival. That is so cool. And then spider webs. These are just like, you know, the spider webs you have, but if you use just a little bit uh, in your make, you know, it, it really creates a cool accent. Wow, wow, wow. Look at that. And those green lights. So good. I love it. So good. I'm serious. Come those on. Apples. Those <laughs> Come apples. On. <laughs> and then he just shows up. Come on. It's so good. Very cool, right? Brilliant. Never seen apples. I've seen a lot of things. Jeez, gluing on those sticks alone. Yep, love that make. Wow, wow, wow. Yep, I agree. See, they, they agree as well. Very cool. All right, you're, I mean, really, the makes just become more and more amazing as we go through. It's like one, one transformation after the next. So Tammy B created this, and you know Tammy B is always about a story, and she shares a lot of it on her blog. So uh, I, it's very, very engaging when she, when she does a blog post for her makes because she just takes you on this whole journey of her imagination because every build she does, there is a story attached to it and I can never do the story justice. So I will let her do that. Uh, what Tammy B created, this is, this is the vignette shrine. So not the art shrine, not, not the one that, not the new one, but we also have a shrine that just has that pointed top. But I love how she did uh, all of those layered pieces by cutting chipboard. She created that, that, that whole detailed shape on, on the rooftop. There's some really wonderful crypt paste, right? That's the seasonal distress stuff to create all that great grunge. And then she added some moss, but this was inspired by the rubs. I do know that the remnant rubs because of that whole vintage crypt and graveyard, she created this wonderful scene with the base. You can see here on the urns, right? She just probably, used, I mean, I love the flowers. I don't know if these are the ends of the brooms or not, or she just got some other little twiggy stuff, but I love how she uh, inked the flowers. That's a great thing about the bouquet because you can do uh, whatever colors of flowers you want. Love seeing those urns. 
there's a paper doll. Again, you're gonna see. So it's really interesting to see how these makers have used this piece in so many different sizes and scales. I love the tombstone. So there's no regrets. So good with the, the grip paste there. That's that beautiful layer scene in the background. That's one of the new layers, right? Beautiful background scene. Then as we turn it around on the back, again, you can see remnant rubs and it's, it's just, again, I love all of the details that Tammy does. Here is our baseboard frame and she kind of created those little, I don't know what those are, the little tomb places that people are, I'm not, I'm not into that, but you can see that uh, the, the whole idea of creating this uh, mausoleum, I think that's what it is. I think, I think that's the word. I'll know somebody will tell me yes or no, but I had it in my head but I love the whole idea of using those remnant rubs to create that inside like a window frame, right? Really creating a whole different look to, yes, to this. Am I? Oh, see, I just took a guess and I spit it out before I even had a chance to think about it. Um, love this paper doll. He is so cool with those flowers. Uh, just has a, a very great stoic look. And then this, and, and she did tell me about it, but now I get to see it in real life. Okay, now it's even more brilliant. She's like, where do you see the sides? Okay, so the sides, this is done with with the crypt paste. Can you guys see that where it just looks like stone? You see the drippy candle? But this is what she told me about. She's like, where do you see uh, the sconce for the candles? So these right here that are holding these drippy candles on both, both ends, that's why she's like, just get a pack of this and you'll know. I connected the dots. This is the adornment silverware pack. So this is in the everyday line. You get three each of the fork, the knife, and the spoon. And, and Tammy has made many things out of this in years past. She, I mean, there's a whole history of what she's done with silverware, even like when she did that whole electric switch with them uh, using the knife. But she took the spoons. Now you can see right here, see that spoon where it's just bent? There's the bottom of the spoon. She has it bent up. There's the handle. She added the little spider and then just added some extra glue, hot glue drips from there. How brilliant is that? I don't want to interrupt. Spoons. Come on. Come on. That is awesome. That is so good. So that's just amazing. I mean, the detail and really just the color palette, right? When you take a look at, at the neutral palette of that by taking all of those things uh, and utilizing those colors, those textures, those pieces and putting it all together and keeping with it, that's really the nice thing about like adding new pieces to layers, right? Adding those great neutral pieces and how you can reimagine a structure that's been part of the line. How you can take something that is very ordinary and make it extraordinary by, by just using your imagination, which like I said, Tammy takes us on a story every time. I love that. I love those urns and just very cool. Amazing make, full of detail, right? Full of detail. Oh my gosh. All right. And here we go. Another folio. So Emma created this one. So like I said, it's very interesting because, you know, we had, I think three makers that used this and it wasn't, wasn't part of the plan, but I'm happy that it, it came out to be this way because it works perfectly um, as a foundation. Here you can see again, the baseboard frames. You can see the great backdrops. I love the word plaque bone collector. You can see the layers used again, having those kind of colors, right? We do a lot of florals and layers, but having stuff for Halloween is really important for everything to kind of match. I love this new backdrop. You see that lace paper It's beautiful. I mean, it looks like real lace. It's just the backdrop paper. There's the droplets in use, right? You can see those just added there for a little shine. I love how Emma used the, the bones, gathered them together with the little spider. And then when we open this up, again, that's her, her creation of that. This, this thing folds out and then we have, there we go. So hers, did she do? Yep, so she kept it as an accordion book. Here you can see, oh, I see some stuff I recognize. I see some chapter three in here. Well done, Emma. I see that. I was just looking, I'm like, that looks like a tab and that looks like a slide frame. So yeah, for those that got uh, the chapter three stuff, great scale to work inside uh, this folio. You can see inside again, there's that lace paper. Now we've got a little card, a little bit of fabric on there and some ephemera in the pin, right? Just using, using that file card. Again, just whether you're, whether you have die cuts or maybe you even have some of the old file folders and you wanted to to kind of ink those up, but the chapter three stuff fits. Look at these little envelopes, right? From Postal. Cut out a little craft glass scene. Very cool to have that. What a great little touch to put into uh, that pocket. And the pocket's created just again by stitching that together and using the stickers. Yeah, I love the idea of creating little glassine envelopes out of that die cut. That's really good. Really, really cool. Again, tiny clips 
Emma does love the hardware, the tiny clips, the mini hardware. Love that, Emma. There's our bat up there, right? So when we take the book, again, see the backdrop? This is, this is Chris Magic right here, right? Because this, this already comes like this. This already comes with the scuff and the inking, the perfect tones in there uh, because of such a great detail in paper. There you can see that crackle tape right, that you put right over the seam. Mario would refer to it as box tape, but it's really uh, the great wide uh, crackle tape. There's some more droplets on there. <laughs> um, oh, I love seeing that, right? That's a little, the little chip, the little typewriter. Then you, oh man, look at the details. So first I just wanna open this up because I always love to, to look to see front and back of the story, right? So we've got just those great pieces of ephemera in there. Again, sewing, there's a the little hardware heads, right? Then we have beware. Collage paper in the background. So see, that's what's nice about this new collage paper. It has just that, that little punch of color, but also some great typography. So there's a lot of open space. I love the slide frame, a little bit of mica over that sticker. So again, that is from Specimen, chapter three, a little bit of, it looks like, that looks like embossing. Yeah, that does. It looks like embossing powder on there over the stitching. That's a cool effect. Um, little, t I love this little tiny, tiny fasteners. They have such a great effect. They're not fun to work with, but they're cool. It has a cool effect. Some stamps on there. Again, another layer of collage paper. And then we have the back with some more ephemera pieces. I love just seeing uh, the raven with the clock. And then as we flip that over, again, just using pieces, the 31, just doing the backs, right? Just adding a little something. You don't have to overdo it because you still want it to fit in the folio, but it's really nice. And then you have that little the end from the sticker. But isn't this collage paper just is a dreamy, guys? It's so good. It is so good. And one thing to, to point out that this folio, each, each panel, I'll just take this out while I have Emma's open, um, is actually gusseted, right? So when you get it, and I've talked about those little score lines, this is to create a, a gusseted box on all the layers. So really when the folio is closed, it does create a, a bit of a, of a box. So if you were to embellish this more and made it a little thicker, it's still gonna fit in here. So that was, that is also by design. So when you fold it and you see those two lines, that's why. So when you have things in there, it's still gonna fold flat to create, but what a great make. So cool, right, to see two of them. Ooh, love it, I love it. Look at that detail. Can we for a minute? To me, it's the finishes. I could, I could just gush over every little finish that the makers do. They don't just like stick it down. They're like, we're gonna grit it. We're gonna alcohol ink it. We're gonna crayon it. We're gonna we're going to do everything in the world of distress, even down to like sewing the paper and then just chewing it away, right? Rolling it up. And really when we're working with Chris, we're like, oh, can we just have like, we always just like Paula's nickname, it could be Foxy now. She's like, can you do a little bit of foxing there? A little foxy, like little, like little dots of that, but it makes a difference, right? When you see the paper and you see that little bit of, of drippage in there, that authentic look, that's just the beauty of, of how much detail uh, Chris really puts into his work. He makes it just absolutely perfect. Perfect, perfect. He really does. But he gets it, and I think when he sees it, it's like, okay, now I really get why and we're like, can, can you make that drip smaller? He's like, sure. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's a drip, but I'll make it whatever size drip you want it to be. Um, all right, so this make, Jan created this. Again, we have another one of those vignette art shrines. Beautiful storytelling here. I love how not only did she take the two panels, because again, remember, it comes with these two wood panels that you would glue, but then she added a bigger base. Nothing wrong with that. Great to take a book cover or chipboard and add a bigger foundation. So if you wanted to tell a story, you could. Um, I love, this one lights up. Let's see what color do we get. Oh, oh, cool. It's behind the, okay, look at that. So here's the transparency. Do you see back there? That's the transparency of the spider webs. So, cause I just thought it was just the spider webs, but then because she put tiny lights behind it, it lights up. Very, very cool. That is awesome. So here you can see there's a little vignette box, a little frame. I love how she's got the skull really pearlized. Like to me, this just has like a, I don't know. It's like a Victorian bride creep thing to it. I think it's, it's because it has just some, some soft, pretty colors. I love seeing the collage paper. So when you do a collage paper over wood, you will see some of that wood grain, right? And the more layers you put on it, the more translucent it will become. I love how she used all the clipping stickers. Let me get it to focus. There you go. All the clipping stickers all the way around that. There's that shape seal. Oh, look at that, how it's like embedded into that crust of that grit paste. That grit paste is everything right there, guys. Again, stickers all the way around. 
There you can see, I'll flip it over for the mechanics. See how that collage paper is just even on wood and you can paint that wood if you give it a little whitewash, right? That's what's gonna give it a little ghosty or you can put it over the top, right? And then we have layers here. There's gate. Maybe it's the other half of the gate that Emma didn't use, but no, it isn't. It's like, that's what it is. Beautiful. Like, come on. I agree, JT. Come on. I mean, it's so cool. The clippings tell a story okay. if you read it. I'm sure oh. Something like that. All right. The clippings tell uh, a story as you read it. I will read it then. Uh, here in the darkened house of weeping, Rosalie ultimately lost her mind, watching and waiting in the dead of night for the ghosts of the departed and unfortunate ending. As when the howling of the wolf is heard, embodied spirits haunted him by night. Then suddenly, a strange thing happened. Horrible sight. Ooh. That's awesome. Goosies right there, guys. <laughs> I gave myself goosies, and I was the one reading it. Oh, my gosh. That's so good. Love that. Thanks. See? I would have totally missed that. I would have missed that detail, and that, that's everything. Uh, again, you're going to see more bouquet. We, you see these flowers all the time, and I think people just forget that it's part of the line to, to work with. And there's our tombstone, fully fully gritted out, and then no escape, and now you can see why. Cool. And I love how she, again, created this little piece with a vignette box to, to add that little attic piece to have that little storyline in there with the skull and the candles and then that transparency. See, tiny lights for the wind, especially this. But you can see how you can take one strand and, and feed it up there and then still come down and add them in more than one spot. It's just one strand, it's just how you break it up, right? Totally beautiful. Yeah, the story, that's it. That's, you read it so good. Did I? Yeah, you did oh, really good. Well, <laughs> that's the whole thing about uh, clipping stickers, that you can, really, you can really tell a story. You can, you can, you can totally haunt your imagination. Okay, so this is, the, this is the clock that Paula created for the packaging. Um, and I thought it was really clever when she told me about, um, she's like, oh, it lights up. And I was like, it does? You know, because I looked, I'm like, I don't, I don't see it. She's like, no, I didn't want to have to worry about drilling through it or, or doing anything. So, I mean, I've never thought of this. She just, the tiny lights and the battery pack are right inside her make. So behind this splash card in there, can you see that, uh, is the battery pack. And she just stuck it down with like a foam tape square so you could, you could still pop it out if you need to replace the batteries. But all I need to do, I gotta take my pork chop fingers. Let me just, let me do this without decapitating this little witch. And I'm just gonna flip the switch. There you go. To turn on those green tiny lights. I mean, how cool is that? That the switch is really kind of hidden behind her head. You can see there. And you just reach back there and turn on the switch. But I've never thought of just actually hiding tiny lights in, in plain sight. So you don't have to do that and I think that's a great option but you can see the clock there's our jack-o-lantern one of my favorites I really hope they stay year after year who knows but I hope they do um, I love how Paula put the the bubbles in the test tube right and the bubbles could just be bubbles and then it's the green light that's going to light them up so whatever color you can have in that color this is a funny story that little piece that was the very first piece of candy corn we had and the only one so when 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 I had to approve the candy corn I was literally sent one piece of candy corn, not a pack, not a pile, one piece. And I had it and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's perfect. So when we were doing the package, I said to Paula, we're gonna overnight you a piece of candy corn. And it sounds ridiculous, but I really wanted that candy corn shown. I'm like, and please make sure you can see it. So that is why she added this other candy corn later once we got it, but that just makes my, me smile, seeing that piece of candy corn on that clock box, knowing it was the only piece we had, then she used it just put it right there in plain sight. I love it. But what a clever make, right? Again, little paper doll, little stickers, some, some bottles, confections. She did a little glitter on there. Just a lot of fun. And then I can turn it off. Yes, there we go. See, that's clever. Again, another use for the clock. So even if you're not doing anything else to it, it's still having that, that shiny black, just perfect, perfect. I agree. The detail, it's all about the story. So fun, so fun in there. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I had. I loved it. Yeah. All right. So now we have another story. I'm going to light this up because I don't want to have to turn it over because it has two. Oh, yeah. Two lights. I'm trying to find it. I'm trying to find it underneath. Two. Oh, I just turned that one off. Where's the other one? Oh, there it is. They're there. They're there. I just have to. I'm trying to reach it without. There, there we go. go. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So Zoe created this. Zoe Hillman. All right. So first off, I just need to give you the perspective because sometimes these are really hard to show on camera when uh, it's a whole scene. So when this is sitting on the table, it's a whole witch's garden, right? 
So this is made with a vignette tray, right? That's gonna be the base. The vignette tray is gonna be this piece. And then we have a vignette box. Now the vignette boxes, you know, they come uh, rectangular, square. So this is a rectangular vignette box and this is just one of the vignette frames. But the whole thing about this witch's garden is first of all, it's, it's deliriously delightful. So take a look at the side, right? So this is the tape and how cool, I mean, having that design tape to put on there that yes, we have crackle paste and you can do all sorts of cool things with crackle, but that's the other nice thing about having this tape is that you can put it on something and you get that crackle effect right away. Okay. So on the outside, right? We've got this, a muck, a muck, a muck. Very cool with the brooms. I love the new brooms. So last year's broomsticks, um, the handles were really dark and black. These are a little bit lighter this year, so it has some different tonal value. I really like that. Oh, look how she decorated the tree. Oh, it lights up back. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, look at her. Oh, my gosh. Paula's going to love that. That's Paula's favorite right there. Look at her peeking out through that baseboard door in the back of the shed. Just creepy. She's trapped in there. Oh my gosh. Okay, now I gotta shut off the lights. I just wanna see. Okay, hold on. Oh, that is so cool with the transparency. You guys see the little spider web? Come on. Oh, that's so good. So here you can see the little bats. So these are the, these are the ephemera bats. They're all sorts of, we, we gave you tons in the package. Uh, different sizes, but I love how she decorated the tree with the bats. There's no regrets. So you see that skull? That's from that adornments pack that's been retired. The skull and crossbones, she just chopped off the crossbones. What a cool piece. I love that idea, Zoe. Very cool to put on there. So see, skull and crossbones, just cut off those crossbones and what a great scale. I'd like to say I did that, but I didn't. I love this door, right? Cause it's got that lock and chain right there and she's trapped. All right, then we've got all this moss. We've got wonderful little stick there. Then we're gonna get around to the front. Okay, I'm gonna just try to tip this back the best I can. So on the front, we've got the bat. Then we have bone collector and the little bone garden. So see how Zoe just cut off those bones, kind of stuck them into the ground with the dirt, some of the, the dead flowers. And then, I mean, really, what are the chances of another piece of silverware, right? Yep, that is silverware. I'm sure that's like the fork or something stuck into the ground like a shovel. See, like, I mean, this skew, I don't even know what this skew is from 2015, right? Seven years we've had this skew in the line. Think about that. And just, it shows up for Halloween, so cool. Then we've got the gates, I love, see look at all that moss and, and grime and grit and grunge that, that Zoe does. And look at the, oh my gosh, okay. Look at what's in that pumpkin bucket. There's a little hand in there. I think that's from, I think those are the adornments, the little Milagros charms, the little hand, the heart. <laughs> she, that, I love that. And mummy cloth, see, mummy cloth can just go around the little barrel. And that, that's another adornment, that's a little prize ribbon. I love that she did a little prizes for the pumpkins. Look how she painted the pumpkins. There you go. There's more little sticks just glued on there. So much cool detail. Love the urn, right? Again, for the tree. Trees don't have to be for Christmas. There's the spider. I also love like how these are cracked. I remember Tammy did that last year too. Breaking these off the base is very cool. Very Disney haunted mansion. Then when you get inside the little garden shed, look at all the detail. There's little pots upside down. Those are adorable. I love those. Those are tiny. I think we need to do some pots for ideology. Then we've got the little bottle and I love how she's got it lit up in the back. See how she's got tiny lights kind of through the back of the shelf, kind of backlighting the things. So that's a little bottle with the new spider. There are the skulls. See, she used one of the old and the new. See, great when you have both. You could use them for scale. There's some books on the shelf, little poison bottle. See that drippy candle? Isn't that great where that drippy candle is just just backlit perfectly. And then you can see the cauldron down there. And that cauldron is covered in crypt paste. Do you see how textured it is? And then you've got all those bubbles just glued around with the tiny lights, right? Now, I'm, now that you've seen it, I'm just gonna turn off the tiny lights just so you can see how magical tiny lights are to your makes. Oh, hold on. I don't, I don't wanna flip this. It's got two, because one is, one is clear and one is green, right? But see, I mean, it's still a, a great make, but how magical is it when it lights up? So good. And she's got the other side of the, the gate right there. I mean, look at all that. How much time do you think it took just to glue moss like that? I mean, I can, it, I fight with it just to glue a clump on something, let alone intertwine it onto an ornate gate. Wow. Fabulous make. Fabulous. So much detail. Oh, and there's a cage in there. Hold on. I just shot rolling. Let me light this, let me light this back up. Do you see the cage? Look at that. Oh, where is it? I'm, I'm trying to, oh, there we go. 
I, I can't, I, I'm, tr I'm looking through my phone, remember that. So there's our cage back there. That, that again was retired. I love how she stuck the raven in there, but look at how like it's all bent. There's some mummy cloth in there as well. So very cool to add that little, so the cage just kind of hangs freely, but I love how she just went in and kind of bent all the wires. And then we have toil and trouble from the baseboards on that. What a cool piece, right? I'm telling you, your stories can just go, go, go. And I think that's the other thing to remember when you're, when you're approaching seasonal makes for ideology. Well, really any kind of make, but even for the season, like give yourself time to tell the story. This isn't like, I'm going to sit down and, and be done in an hour. Like enjoy the process. Even if it's like, I'm just going to spend three hours gluing moss. Okay. But now it's going to have, it's going to be this cohesive thing everywhere. Just amazing. So amazing. Like, amazing. Cage, send the yeah. Cage back. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's no more cages, but it was a cool cage. They were, yeah, they were quite expensive to do. That's, that's the truth of the matter for the cage. The cage, we can't afford to bring them back. Uh, they're just too expensive now. All right, so take a look at this panel series Sharon did. I always love to see uh, just, again, different aesthetic, different approach for making. So these are the ideology. These are the vignette panels. These are the squares, right? So these come those three sizes. And I love how Sharon just flipped them over. So instead of doing stuff inside, just use them as an art panel series. So these could, these could sit up if you wanted to put them onto, you know, a mantle. Well, you probably need to weight this one down because it's got resin in it, right? Or you can hang it on the wall. But take a look at these. So here we've got the backdrops, right? Look at that nice drip running through, Chris. We've got that wonderful baseboard. Here's a test tube. This is filled with resin, right? Uh, actually, Jan did one as well. So it's taking uh, the Ranger resin and you can just mix it up with uh, inks or paint just to give it that little murk, fill it up, and then it solidifies in there, right? I love a little resin kit that I do with Ranger. It's just nice because you can make a small little batch. Wired a little lock on there. Then this one, ooh, she got fancy. She cut that jack-o'-lantern, look at that. Cut with a Dremel tool, I'm guessing, I would imagine that. And then just the candy in there, there's that snapshot of the trick-or-treaters. Looks like it's got some of the, the translucent crackle over the top, see that, that rock candy? That's what's gonna give it that cracked photo look. The bat, the paper, the little flash card. And then this one, I love seeing those tiles, right? So the whole idea of those collage tiles already cut for you you just glue them on and you can leave a little gap. So see how she kind of did a little grit paste grout in between there. So fun just to use those panels because they're already done. So even though this looks like layered, they already come like that, right? This, she just added a little sticker, added a little layer on here, added some stack numbers and then that new shape seal, right? With the skull. And then of course, crit paste all around. But I also love how she just did kind of that, that little splash of color because that's what Sharon does that splash of color, just fun, a great idea. So a great idea if, if you have, like maybe you have a set of these, maybe you have a set of vignettes and you're like, I don't know what to do with them. And you think that every vignette needs to have this, this thing inside the story. It doesn't, they also make really great art panels, right? Really fun. I love the wicked elixir here. I love how it's wired. You can tell I like things that move, right? Great job, Sean. Very cool. So much inspiration, right? So much inspiration. All right. So this one, you know, this holds a sweet spot for me. A shout out to my partner in candy crime, Tammy B, right? Take a look at the candy casket. Now, of course, tiny lights, I lit them up, but let me turn them off so you can see. Take a look at this candy casket that Tammy B did. So this again is the new uh, vignette art shrine. Hopefully you're gonna see why it's worth the wait, right? Because maybe you're like, oh, I don't want it. It's a great surface to tell a story in because it just has this cool height, but I think that slight angle, it's just unique and it's deeper than a tray. So of course it's worth the wait. And I think it's still gonna be a great structure for Christmas, right? I see a little Christmas house made out of this. So it's worth it. But I do love how, oh, look at that. I was just gonna say, what is that? Take a look at this. So these are the tack nails that we did uh, in Ideology. These were the nails that were in the vignette hardware and I said, I'm just gonna do a pack of nails. So we sell, these are, these are part of Ideology. They're little tooled nails, so they're not perfect. They're a soft enough metal. They're, they're totally random. So the, the nail head, why it doesn't look rounded is because they're not. And they're these tiny little short spikes. And I love how she hammered them in to make this look like a built coffin. See how she did that on all the seams? Super clever. 
They are soft enough that after you hammer it, you can either bend them or use wire cutters and you can snip off the ends. I'm not sure uh, which direction she went. Oh my gosh, look at the back. Oh, sweet mother of casket. Look at that. There's a stamp, right? That she stamped the casket company. I recognize that from one of the stamp sets, but look what she did. She kind of went in with like either scissors or some sort of knife and just carved into the wood to make it look like planks, right? Cause this is a solid wood panel, but can you see that? Look at that detail. Very cool. And then added the nails to just so see, I mean, it's still wood. She didn't, the, it's just the wood, but how she did the nails in that little treatment really gives it that cool casket vibe, right? And then inside we've got all of the papers in there. So you've got the backdrops, right? She went in and just die cut that little sign out of wood grain. Okay. The little shelves right here. I'm going to turn on the lights, the little shelves, because I do love the purple lights. These are the et cetera, right? So this is from Stampers Anonymous. This is the, the little Halloween. She also used some little wood pieces right there and we'll take it through like level by level. So here we have the jack-o'-lantern, the confections candy, and you can see Tammy did all her coloring in there, right? Now it just has the orange, the yellow, the black, the white. This a little tipped over cauldron. All of these are bubbles. Bubbles that have been alcohol inked and then coated in distress rock candy glitter to look like sugar. So look at, and I love how the cauldrons just tipped over spilling the candy out, right? It's like they, yeah, they were a casket company and decided to open a candy shop. And then of course, seriously, a whole bucket of candy corn. This is more than a package, but you can see it's worth it. I do love that. There's a resin barrel and just the candy corn pieces just spilled everywhere. Isn't that, I mean, that is, that is a candy lover's dream make for Halloween. That's what it is. It's just, is it's awesome. very cool, Tammy. I love the look of this. Oh, and if you look in the back, can you see back there? There's a little fringe. I just noticed it. It just, I love that little detail. See it just, I know the lights on, there we go. The light's going to hit it. So there's some fringe behind each of those little shelves and that kind of fills in the space, but it also just gives that little bit of uh, black paper fray in, in the background. Really cool. And I love all the little signs from the layer. Just so many fun details as always, Tammy B just, great storyteller, but I love the candy casket. See, just makes you want to start making stuff with candy, right? Whether you're using the confections, the candy corn, the bubbles, just really, really cool. I love it. I love it. I love it. So that's why it's like, if you're doing candy, make sure you get enough candy because you're going to use it. All right. So this make Susie created this one and it was very interesting. I got some, some notes about it. Uh, and I found this really kind of fascinating actually, because I don't, I don't think I've ever seen anyone do this. So it's no surprise that Susie did it. This right here is the exact same folio that Paula and Emma both did. It's the same piece, but the way she did it, it's completely reimagined. So to me, it was initially unidentifiable. Now I, I get it. All right. So this piece, this top flap that I'm going to open is really this bottom flap. Cause remember, it, it has the folds. It's got that gusseted thing and she rounded the corners. So this piece is really what we've kind of seen as the bottom piece, right? Just so you, just so you can kind of get your bearings as we go through it. Cause it took me a minute to kind of like, wow. Okay. So first we'll talk about how I love the fact that even if you're a bookmaker or you, you make junk journals and you think dimensional embellishments are not for you, I would strongly disagree because look at how she took that test tube, right? Use a little screw eye and filled it with candy corn, little confections. There's a little remnant rub on there. Use some of the, the crackle, right? That rock candy on there. There's a little no regrets and that just hangs on the side of the journal. So that just adds just a little element of, of fun, a little whimsy. I think it's great. And then we've got the shape seal that that becomes uh, the piece that is her, her tie down, right? To, to close this up. She used that word plaque to uh, not only hold the string, but take a look at this reveal underneath it, right? When I pull this down, see that little spider? Let me try to get him to hang down. There he is. I got my pork chop fingers in. It's bigger than the spider. So see that? So I love that it's like, you know, when it, when this is tied down, you don't see the spider, but then when you open it, then the spider uh, drops down from the string. Very cool. So then we open this flap, which was really the bottom, but in, now it's the top. She kind of created a couple of things on the outside. So take a look at kind of this decayed, eroded, holes that she ripped into these pieces and then stitched them. I love seeing that, that paper there, the tags, you can see all the pieces. These are the collage tiles, right? So now that seal just became an embellishment, but really it was functional 
to close the journal, okay? Then we have this pocket here. Again, love chapter three, right? So those of you that have chapter three and you think, how am I gonna use it? This is what it's all about. You just use these pieces. Now, I'll be honest, I'm not sure how much of this I'm supposed to open or not, but we'll know in a second. Okay, well, that's brilliant. Did you guys just see that? So this is essentially that coin envelope completely deconstructed, meaning when you die cut it, instead of gluing it like you would, because that bottom would fold up and you would glue it and that becomes the pocket, she used this, let me see if I can do it again, wrapped it around and then went a second time because these are also part of that, but then left and I thought, oh, I wonder if this just popped open from the glue. No, it wasn't ever meant to be glued. So now when you open it, you have this whole little folio using that coin envelope and now you have that extra little book. Look at that, mummy cloth, hello. See, there should just be like a counter how many times you've said it. Mummy cloth and then stitch. And mummy cloth became this functioning hinge. This is glued down with a little collage medium and then sewn. But take a look at that. Little frosted crystal, distressed frosted crystal embossing powder. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, it has a great effect over photos. I love how she's got that, that bat right on her head, right? Little witch hazel from the ephemera. And look at that detail, right? How fun with the little tape pieces, all the ephemera. But what a very clever use for that envelope. Seriously. Come on. I really, I wasn't, I wasn't sure where I was going with this because I'm like, I think it's what it is, but I think it fell apart. Nope. I was wrong. Very cool. And look at that. Just using a little curator, right? Any of those little pieces just to create that little pull, gluing those back to back. So good. And I like, again, you've seen so many eyelets. So those eyelets create that little pocket. There's that crackle tape. So even just adding a little bit of a reveal, there you can see all those curator labels. So if you, if you got them last year, if you have them for every day, that this is why they're so perfect for Halloween, okay? Then we wrap, go around the back. We haven't even opened it yet. There's kind of this belly band that, that she created that housed another little book, right? This book also done uh, with chapter three. This is using specimen, that file folder. And look at how she just created this book out of that file folder, right? So die cut that. There's our skull layers, but look at all these cool pieces, right? Look at the droplets. We can see those small little pieces of ephemera. Oh my God. The transparency. See, isn't that magical? A little butterfly. Again, just stitched so it has some dimension to it. I love the pieces of mica, the little masquerade. Look at that little detail here. Again, chapter three. You're going to get sick of me saying that, and I don't care because I think it's so cool to see things get repurposed and reused in different ways. There, so, so far we've seen the file folder, the coin envelope, this is the postal envelope. Again, look at that little tuck where you can open that little envelope and you've got a little card to pull out. Boo, that's so good, right? Again, mummy cloth has really been like, and I like how she just has this little layer here that's holding this little bit of the envelope in, tuck it in, little tiny clips. But I really like how she was able to stitch into that mummy cloth to create this. There's Theo later, there's that skull right over the guy's head. See, perfect scale. I like he still has little, his little mutton chops there. Very cool with, with that texture. Again, when we turn the page, I love how she's sitting in front of that, that beautiful piece of ephemera with the florals. Just great detail. We haven't even got inside yet. Again, just another way of taking paper and just kind of creating things. Now we're gonna open the folio. Oh no, we're not. We're not even opening it. Look at this. She made a pocket out of it. See, I'm telling you, brilliant. See, like I thought I was just gonna open it like the other ones. Nope, belly band. So when she used the eyelets, she actually just kind of used the bottom of that, sealed that together. So it's kind of like, well, like a crayon box. And then very clever to leave that little string so I could, cause I was like, um, this isn't opening. Look at that. All right. Oh my gosh. Look at that bat mustache. Come on. That is so good. Cool. That is so good, right? So there's our layer guy. There's our little bat upside down for the mustache. I mean, come on, this is so good. It's just, you can't make this stuff up. The, the imagination is like, right? I love the remnant rubs back there. There you can see the little bone for uh, the body of the butterfly. And then when we open this, just see so many cool, creepy things. These are the label frames. I love that around the eye with a little grip paste. Again, you can see how the papers are just tattered and torn and, and just pulled little tags that can pull out. See, I love seeing the little pieces, like that's just a cut up transparency, that little eye chart, but a cool inclusion, 
right? Just adding those pieces. You don't have to use everything in its entirety. There you can see that door again. I love how she's just peeking behind the door. The door, oh, he, oh my gosh. Okay, look at that. So see how she took the transparency of the cobwebs and made it look like it's shattered? See that now? Fabulous. Oh my so God. good. And that's why he's peeking through. A little brother. And look at his raven in there. Toil and trouble, that little duo. Great, great pieces. I've seen this background piece used. Well done, Paula. Paula found this background piece for uh, Halloween. And it, I've seen it now in, in the back of the shrine and in the back of uh, the vignettes and in the book. It is a beautiful, beautiful piece. But a great foundation. But see, just that. Just, again, and using mummy cloth as that little binding for the book. So that alone is, yeah. Very, very cool, Susie. So cool. That little shattered thing, I'm all over that, really. And that, the bat stash, come on. Okay. <laughs> then he just goes in. See, leaves that. See, that's really smart because that, that book would have never come out. I would have been flicking. This, these aren't going in there. They, they just don't fit. Unbelievable. See, do you see the spider was there? Let me just do that again. I swear, I'm a five-year-old. I said that. Look at that. There it is. He's just hanging there, and then when you go to put the book, he just hides. That's so good. So good. Unbelievable with the folio. Am I right? Unbelievable. Yeah. That's sweet. Yeah. Think outside the box. Think outside the book. All right. Oh, see? Look, I set myself up for this one. Speaking of think outside the box, this is Vicky, and she's like, box? I don't think so. So she just took a vignette box and knocked out the back panel. Now it's just a vignette box frame. Okay. So this did start as a vignette box, but she just removed the back panel and now she created this frame. This display dome is stuck inside. I'm gonna really try to kind of show the detail because I've seen on the sneak peek this little seal, but I'm sure there's a bunch of stuff inside because, well, it's Vicky. So the outside has got some great crackle, right? Love the mini hardware on there. But then inside is a display dome. So this is what I saw on the sneak peek. Look at how she did that shape seal to make it look like a wax seal just using glossy. Now, I'm not sure if this was spray paint or if this was acrylic paint and I don't know, or maybe embossing glaze, but it sure looks shiny like wax. It's very, very cool. So it's nice to alter things. Little threads around it, right? There's that tape, but okay. There, let's take a look inside together. I can see skulls in there, right? Add it up. I see a candle stand. There's a cauldron. Oh, another skull in there. Because Vicky's are always like, if, if she'd knock the back off, she wants you to kind of go around. Take a journey. Oh, there's another one. Oh, look at the spider on his head. See how she just kind of took that new spider charm? That is so creepy in the coolest way possible. Oh, look, there's, oh, see that there's a, there's a test tube in there with a drippy candle. Can you guys, I'm trying to get the light to cooperate, but it's like a red drippy candle wrapped. And then there is one of the locks. Wow. All the bones sticking out of the cauldron. There's another cauldron. She can fit a lot in a dome. Am I right? Wow. Very cool. But see, yeah, you can see through it there. There's a better picture of that little red candle with the stand. But man, I love how that just splash of red, especially on something dark like that. But see, when it's sitting up, now you understand kind of the make because the light passes through it on, on whatever side uh, you display it on. So sitting on a table or something, that's a very cool idea for a dome and giving it even more, more dimension on there, right? So very cool. But really, that spider, <laughs> that's really good. Really cool. Amazing makes, right, Mario? Leave it up to Vicky. If well, she was here, it would have been nailed to the table. Yeah. She'd be like, um, can you help me get the box off the table? Like, <laughs> yeah. Sure, Vic. Yeah, because she nailed it on there. Right. She's like, I'm just going to, just want to attach something. <laughs> All right. So take a look at this uh, vignette art shrine. Paula created this one. I love, again, the storytelling because the thing about when you're creating it, right? We've seen the candy shop. We've seen you know, the, the Victorian with the, the story, the brides, like there's so many different ways that you can tell a story in a, in a structure. And that's why in ideology, it's so important to have them because we want you to be able to, to build in there. This one, I just, I love the look of it. Tiny lights. Oh, look at the back. All right. So this is all done with collage tiles. This is what I was saying is so cool about collage tiles. This is right here is a little bit of tape, right? So that's the design tape, but all these pieces, those are the tiles. So even though you think this is collage, it's already done. So it's one layer. That's the cool thing about the collage tiles and why we also wanted to update them. Because you see how impactful it is when you have like big pieces, 
photos and then you have layered pieces, it really makes it look like you went in with ephemera, but guys, that's all flat. I already did that part, right? And so I've already went in with like distress crayon before we scanned it in. So all that little grunge is, is part of the paper. It's already printed on there. But what a great way to cover the whole outside and back all done with the whole patchwork of those tiles. So it doesn't always have to be on the display panel, right? It could be on anything that you want to just add that. But we've got those tiny lights. Uh, and look at how it lights up that moon. This is a new piece, right, that we did. Oh, look at that. She even punched holes through the moon. Seriously. Of course Paula did. So it's back with tiny lights. The inside is the new collage paper. So you can see in there, this background right here is collage paper. There is the tape. But look at that moon. I love how she punched the hole so the light shines through. Oh, beautiful. I can see some. Oh, see that? I see a little bit of that mica stain on the top, right? Maybe that's a little harvest moon. It looks a little yellow. It looks like some harvest moon splattering, maybe. Love that paper doll. He's one of my favorites. Love that he's holding the key to these gates, right? Little, little crit paste on there. There's the locks. Love, there's a tombstone back there, a little drippy candle, little fringe. Great detail and so much story. Oh, and look at the little raven perch right there, right? This little raven guy. Very, just see? Storytelling at its finest, even on the inside collage tiles. But it's really, I think it's, I, I don't know, just Paul has a way of like making theme, things seem uh, totally fluid on here, right? Just by the, the coloring and the schmutz, as I would call it, of stuff that, that goes in. And look at the bottom, right? It's got, look at the little pebbles she used in there. Little rocks at the bottom. There's some of that uh, crackle as the base, a little bit of moss, just and then dearly departed with the hardware heads. So again, these wood pieces, what's nice about these, because they don't come attached and people often wonder like, why don't you attach them? Because one, you may not want a base, you might wanna hang it. But two, you can either center these, right? So it goes all the way around, or you can flush them to one side so you have like a bigger, a bigger step out in the front. So it's really so a maker has uh, choices, right? Of how you want to create with them. Plus it makes it so much easier to paint and color and do all of that, but yeah. I love this one. Paula's doing kits for this. Oh, she, oh this yeah. is going to be a class. Oh, there you go. Paula's going to kit this one. Yeah, if, you, if you're on Paula's blog, she, she does have a, a list that you can sign up and, and get notified when she does kits. Because often she'll kit some of her makes, uh, limited number, and then it comes with instructions and all the stuff you need. Very her cool. Kits are the cool. Yeah, they're really cool. Love that. Very nice. All right. So this one, I saw it when I set it up, and I couldn't wait to dive in. So uh, Marlies created this. So this is a giant wooden spool, okay? And this is a spool book, I guess, if you will. So the whole entire thing, I, I love this, this little piece at the end. We've got little lock and key, right? There's our eyelet, but have you ever seen spool books? I just love them, they're just so cool. So just take a look at layers and layers of paper, collaged, stitched, sewn. There's so many things in here from paper dolls to wallpaper to snippets to ephemera to label stickers, there's the adornments. So see, you can still hide little adornments in there. Um, wallpaper scraps, remnant rubs. I mean, just look at the detail as we go through it. It's like a, it's like a movie, right? This film strip, it'll just keep going. And the torn edges, I mean, fabulous, fabulous layering. I, again, I love all the threads. I love the stickers. I love that little, little bit of mummy cloth hiding out. I mean, look at all these pieces. So this, I can really get into this, where you're just layering stuff and you just, it's like you're only as good as your next layer. And then you just add another piece, you tear, you ink. And I love the little cast. Oh, look, there's the collage paper with the gate. I mean, talk about including a lot of paper products in a single make. This is where you get to use up all your stuff. And even if you had leftover pieces, scraps from previous years, what a great idea to use it. And then it's just attached to this uh, wooden spool of black lace right? That's on there at the end again with the eyelets. Now, of course, this side, right? This is kind of your front side because when you're sewing through this, you are going to have your mechanics. You're still going to have that, right? But that's the whole idea behind this because imagine like what I think about this is like sitting it. I mean, you're not going to, I'll just do it like this, but imagine this sitting like on your, on a mantle or on a table, like open like that, where it's still attached to the spool over here. But now you've got this wonderful cascade of of imagery and you could still do other things. You could have, you know, 
candlesticks, pumpkins, whatever you're doing for your decor. But this is kind of a cool, it's almost like a banner, if you will, right? That, I mean, I know it could be like a spool book, but I see it really laying around like that because it's just, it is, it's an absolute wonderland of Halloween imagery. I mean, you could just, I'm just going to, as I roll it back up, I'm going to just take you through again. Amazing, right? I mean, look at the detail of just stitching with the spider. So much time goes into just layers and layers and layers for the makers, right? So whether they're doing paper layers, stitching, rubs, inking, grip paste for dimensional layers, it is all about the details. And that's the magic of ideology, is that we really spend a lot of time making sure every little detail counts, right? Because when you put it all together, we want that cohesive magic. We want it to be something unique, right? Something that was just, uh, you know, a thought developed by the mind of what ought to be. That is ideology, just an idea. Very cool, Marlies. I love it. And see just that great added effect with, with adding those, those pieces. So a cool use for all of your, your paper, your ephemera, your inks, your stamps, your rubs. Very cool. And then it just sits. Yeah, I would just have it open. Everyone's going to go crazy. Amazing. One of those spools. Amazing. It's yeah, so cool. it's a cool, big, big wood spool. I've seen these at like TJ Maxx before, like at, at Christmas for like big wooden ribbon. I mean, uh, like, uh, not wooden ribbon, a big wooden spool with like velvet ribbon. I've seen oh, them there before, cool. but yeah. But it's just a, a cool, cool piece. So Great. We're, we're going to very Max creative. Today. <laughs> very, <laughs> very creative. All right. We still have a couple more makes. We're in the home stretch, guys, but take a look at this one. All right. So Jan created this again, a candy lover's delight. This is the Hocus Pocus confectionery. So I'm going to light it up. You can see in there, there's our cauldron that lights up. So it does have tiny lights. This one, she just went into the clock because um, although this back is designed to go flush, it, the wire is thin enough that you can still go into it as long as you don't push it totally flush, right? Because you don't want to you don't want to split the wire. So if you don't want to drill a hole through there, you can see it just goes right up through the bottom and you can push this. It's, it's like a friction fit, but you can also add some uh, collage medium to glue that. But that's another way that you can add tiny lights if you want it behind. But I love how Jan took two vignette boxes, right? Stuck them together to create a bigger wooden base for the clock, right? That's a, a very fun, cool thing to, to take the clock and put it on a bigger base so you can tell, right? A bigger story with the curio clock. But take a look at the confectionery. There's so many cool details. All right, first off, I, my hand just hit it. Take a look at this little bat. Do you see what I was saying about that little tinsel and how it's wired? Look at the little ephemera bat, just like doink, doink, you know, right? Doink, doink. doink. It should have a sound effect. Doink, doink, doink. doink, doink, doink. Um, but there's our little jack-o'-lantern. I love how she also included uh, that little tinsel because if you use a heat tool on it, you'll get it to, to kind of shrivel up and go smaller. Right? Just be careful with it. It's going to melt, but it does make it a little bit tighter and cool. I love how she's got the little candies and she put a, a stick on there to make those look like lollipops. And then take a look at these little elixirs. So here she took the cork vials. I do know how she did it because she left me a note. And I'll show you this one because this one's even bigger. So this is done again with uh, the, the Ranger resin, right? Tinted. So those, that's tinted and filled. So it makes it look like a little candy corn. There you go, you can see it better in the light. A little candy corn elixir. And then the top, the top is just using texture paste, using uh, just a, like a pastry bag. I talked about this when I did uh, the Gingerbread Village. You can take the Distress Texture Paste, right? The opaque one, and just squeeze it through and it creates that little whipped cream and then it hardens like that. So that's where all that little whipped cream comes in. And there's actually a really cool uh, plunger that, uh, that Jana, she, posted last year and I bought those. I can't wait to use them this year, but uh, it's a silicone one that you can clean it out, but a very cool idea. Oh, wait, take a look at this. I just see this. Look at this little cookie sheet right here, right there. Look at that little bat cookies that she did. That right there, that, that, oh my God, that is, that is the label. That's a label frame from chapter three. I believe that's, me? that's what it is. Come Cause it's, on, cause it's a die cool. cut and embossed little jump ring so you have the handles and then there's a little bat cookies very very clever i love the candy corn where it's got that little sparkle little pumpkin see those could be glittered as well and then we've got the test tube where she's got some of that resin that's just dripped out of it right that you were you're making up all your candy concoctions little hocus pocus in there and then we get on the inside and the inside's a whole nother party so here you can see uh that she just pierced through those confections and made a little garland right? Just stitched through it with some thread, added a little glitter, 
There's the cauldron. Again, the bubbles. She did rock candy on hers. Look at the cake stand where she took the, the candle stand, a little circle of chip, chipboard, and then made a little cake stand. There's another one of those little candy corn uh, little confections in there. I love that. Even the spider, a little sugary spider. There's the bones. And I like how she built that up too. That's another thing to know about uh, when you're working on a structure, right? You can work inside, but you can also just take any kind of chipboard, anything, and, and build up to whatever you want. Because there is no glass here and the back comes off completely, you can easily go in and measure, uh, cut your pieces of chipboard, round that out, glue it, and actually make a little riser like Jan did uh, for that table. But what a very fun hocus pocus confectionery. Just so cool. And I also like how she finished the clock. That's just using the tape, right? So this is the design tape. I like how it just uh, did that. And she looks like a little frosted crystal embossed on there. That's what's giving it that dull texture instead of it looking like tape. Uh, but I like how you can just stick that on because of that uh, very cool print. So that's why we also like to just do, you know, a skew of tape for stuff. It's, it makes it fun. She even used it down here on the edge a little day or night. But yeah, and those bat cookies, come on. Can you even? And I just, I want to have a drink. I want to see what that tastes like, but it's not going to do any good. It's solid as a rock. Very, very cool make, Jan. Just fun, right? So fun. It's the drip. I know that's got to have you and me, really. That stuff just oozing and pouring out of that test tube. Jeez, that's what it's all about. And not only that, but let's just one more time. Doink, doink. That's fun, see? It is. All right. All the little details and sound effects. Okay, two more. Now, detail, it's, it's like detail overload. Okay, so this just such, such a fabulous make. I love it. I love it. I love it. So Paula created this one as well. Paula was very busy. So thanks, Paula, because I just kept throwing things at her and she's like, I got it. I got it. She'll make. Um, I think she made this one like in a matter of like, I don't know, two hours. She says longer, I think shorter. Um, I know the timeline. But uh, I was talking about the, the vignette display panels because one of the things that, that we launched um, last year, I think, for, for the everyday line was this vignette panel. So this is a square, but it's kind of like our trays. So it has a, just not much of a depth, but enough, but it makes a great panel. Sure, you can build inside it, but it really was for a wall panel. And we didn't have a make with it. And I just thought like we're really missing on the opportunity because there's so many components in the world of ideology that are designed to work on the on specific structures. Collage tiles, for example, uh, are measured to scale where you can fill up a display panel uh, without ever cutting the papers. But I also like Paula's approach where she not only uses the tiles, but also takes like worn wallpaper scraps or uh, elements of backdrops and doesn't just create that tile work, uses some of them, but then creates bigger panels out of the paper. I also loved how she, she used the the fringe here, look at that. That's got a little decayed on there. Can you see how that light just kind of makes it a little bit, a little shiny? I love that mica stain decayed. So that's just under, this is an old, this is a vintage folding ruler. Very clever use of, of a folding ruler for a shelf. She's got the apothecary. There's a test tube, right? Filled with little bones and then some mummy cloth in there. So you just shredded. Uh, I love the toadstools, how they're painted black. There's one of the, the entomology. So these insects, this is everyday ideology. Get it out for Halloween. I also love how she put the candle inside the urn, right? The candles don't always have to go on the stand. And she painted it black and then just did that little metallic over the top of it. Look at that black candle, right? Very hocus pocus. Cool. And then laboratory, my favorite. I love uh, these glass bottles. I love the shape of them. I filled it with bubbles. Use a little curator. There's our skull on there. There's another a little entomology. I just love this. And then we've got this guy. So these right here, these are the curio frames. They, they come metallic, so they're kind of a gold metallic, but I love how she antiqued it with black. So you see a little of that metallic come through. Mica fragments over the top of that portrait just gives it an eerie look. And that looks like mica stain back there as well to really just give it kind of an eerie, eerie glow. And just a little bit of ribbon, just beautiful details. This is what I was saying about uh, how Paula uses collage medium and stuff on her ribbon. So as she's tying it, so these little pieces and loops, they stay perfect because she just, I believe it's collage medium, runs over the ribbon and then every little curl and loop that you see, it will always stay that way when it dries, which is a, a clever use. But just when you look at the composition of it, it's just magic. It's taking a panel 
and then it's just building out from the center, right? Using a found object. I, again, I think this really adds just that Halloween vibe to it. I love seeing a lot of everyday items incorporated into a Halloween theme because that's the other thing you got to remember. Maybe you have a budget for everything. Maybe you have a budget for some things, but that doesn't mean you can't take what you already have and transform it to, to make your seasonal uh, makes go even longer. So don't forget what's in the toy box ever, right? And utilize things in unique ways. Love the candle in the urn, all right? So speaking of unique ways, we've got another make. This one's a doozy, I'm, and I know I can't do it justice, and I'm, I'm glad that I got the permission slip from Tammy that I didn't have to, okay? Because um, she said this is an ode to Poe, like a, just a, a lit person's dream. So I'm just gonna show you this in, as an aerial shot because I have to turn it and flip it and do all of that. Essentially, it's a, it's a huge stack of books but the books are all vignette boxes and she has a tutorial on how she has transformed vignettes into books you'll see when i turn it but like all of these are books now it does light up so i'm going to just turn on the tiny lights they're underneath well i'll show you the underneath because you can see it's a vignette tray right so it's got two strands of tiny lights that's a vignette tray but the vignette tray really looks like a book does it not see that bottom piece or that whole bottom and she's got right here short stories it's even rounded on the edge. So although this looks like it's sitting on a book, now you guys see the mechanics, it is not, it's a vignette. And all of these pieces are vignettes. So these pieces right here, vignette boxes. I'll turn it around, because it's a totally three-dimensional make. It's all of those books are boxes, hollow. Those books are, come, come on. <laughs> Got it. Well, but, I saw them. but this really allows you to kind of build a story inside the books, right? Without really hollowing them out because you've taken a box and made it into a book. So here you can see there's Poe, right? That's a, a piece from, we, we put him in ephemera before, we put him in layers. It's just, it's a great, great piece, right? You can see mummy cloth going around, a little frame in there. And Tammy's gonna take you on a story. She already said that she's gonna uh, talk about this on her blog and go through the whole story. There you can see the shape seals that look like just all these wax seals sitting there, little coins. There's the skull. I love seeing that, that bug going across the book. If you've seen the sneak peeks, now you can kind of place where a lot of these things are, okay? But then when we look in here, take a look at how she created this crypt. So if you look in the back, there's crypt paste. And do you see what's holding up that candle? Yeah, another piece of freaking silverware. Only this time she took the fork and like bent all its tines, look at that fork, and curled it and made a candle holder out of a fork. So she did the sconce with the spoon and now she's got that with the fork. I mean, that's brilliant, so good. Then we've got the baseboard window frames. There is the gate just creating with all that crit paste and look at all those skulls. This is where you want skulls and bones, right? Just to kind of create that, that cool little catacomb look in there, right? I love having that little skull and crossbones. I'm going to miss that adornment. I better get some more after this. I already know I'm going to miss it, so I'll get some more. I do love that. There's the bat on the top of it. Beautiful, beautiful. Look at that. That's the bottom of a barrel right there. So that's a little resin barrel turned upside down. Again, some mummy cloth sticking out. Then we go around. There's that door. There is, oh, see, really cool. There's a tombstone there. I can see that she created her own, so that's gonna be part of the storyline. I'm sure, a little bouquet, right? Inked up there, but isn't that great how like real this looks? It's just printed on there, but it has such a realistic look. I love the Raven, do you get that? And then this right here is the vignette file box. So this is the one that I kind of opened with that I talked about, inspired this box that Paula did. So this box already comes with the dividers and this hardware, right? And then Tammy just covered it and created this wonderful little library with all of the books Look at all those little books done with the ephemera book covers, right? Using all the little stickers. I love seeing the eye in there in the little frame because we do those, uh, those little adornment frames. More skulls in there, drippy candles, right? A little pen nib and some writing. But see again, the tiny lights used for kind of this backdrop illumination, right? Because at night, you know, there's no doubt that, that the back of the books are gonna light up and it's just, a, a beautiful, beautiful vibe, but unbelievable, right? And then there is, there's Poe right there. So much detail, am I right? I mean, Mario's like, okay, 
okay, you gotta see this. Like, these are books, but they're not books, they're boxes. And he flips over, he's like, look, it's a box. And I'm like, I remember her doing a Christmas one, but just, but when you see them all stacked, like you really, when you don't, it's, when you don't know, it, it's amazing. You don't realize what, what the start is. Yeah, just the fact that, I mean, away. yeah, it's very, it's a, just a brilliant, brilliant idea, but so much detail and so, so beautiful from, from the story part of, of the makers. Am I right? Like Tammy B, just amazing. And I can't wait to read the stories because now I learn more about all the details, right? Because I, I think, you know, I'd have to be smarter to really understand that. And, and now I just appreciate, you know, the fact that she bent a fork, right? That's me. She's like, yeah, but the Ode to Poe. I'm like, but you bent a fork, right? Yeah, it's That's silverware today, so but good. Win. I know, <laughs> but, but like silverware and folios, like you just, you never, never know. Like that to me is, is the most amazing a most amazing thing. So okay, let me I think let that's, I think that's really good. So those are the makes, those are the makes from the amazing makers that really kind of uh, create so much imagination. And I thought, you know, I wanted to, I always think, right. It, there's a lot of time that goes into designing product, developing product and doing this for six brands continuously, sometimes seven, depending on if I'm doing fabric or jewelry as well. Um, but, the makers really help tell the stories of the ideas that we dream of because we have maker meetings. I share kind of the inspiration behind all of the product. Uh, and it's so amazing to see what they do to bring these products to life. So uh, again, a shout out to all the makers for doing so many amazing things. All their makes will be on, on timholtz.com following this. But I was saying to Mario, like, I think I wanna do something else for this. So uh, if you guys wanna stick around for a while, I have some demo set up to share with you some of kind of my favorite yes. hacks, if you will, or tips and tricks of what I like to do with ideology things just to play around. So we're just gonna go back and do a demo. So here we go. So let's start out with just some fun, some fun stuff. I just wanted to share some ideas for a demo and I have a few lined up just to kind of take you through and, and see what we got, right? So first thing we're gonna talk about is uh, texture. You need those? There you go, thanks. First thing we're gonna talk about is some texture. And I do love grit paste crip. So this is the stuff that is seasonal, okay? Um, and what makes this stuff unique from other grit paste, because we do have grit paste in the line. We have it in opaque and we have it in uh, translucent. We have it both, but what's cool about crypt is that it is a tinted paste, right? But it also has these little tiny black flecks in there. It is a translucent based paste. And because of that, there are ways that we can color it to our benefit, okay? How do I like to use it? Well, I like to use it if I'm going to alter things. So for example, like the tombstone, which you've seen in a lot of makes. You saw uh, Tammy, Zoe's, like a lot of people, uh, pretty much most makers use texture paste in some way. Uh, and crit paste, especially for Halloween, because when you put it on, you can apply it with your finger, you can apply it with a brush, a palette knife, and every little bit of texture that you put on it, it will dry that way, okay? And it has the most unique color already done. We I wanted to kind of give it this grime color, but I don't want you to feel limited by that, and that's why I wanted to kind of share this demo with you, right? I also like to use it, for example, on the urn. So maybe you wanted to add just a little bit of tiny moss to something, right? Because regular moss up here might be too big on something detailed, right? You might glue a piece on it, it looks like a Chia Pet. Well, this is where using Crip paste can come in because you can add little bits of it. So all the stuff on the edges and the sides, that's all crypt paste, but up here is real moss, just like, you know, reindeer moss that you can find at the craft store. These are the pumpkins that I just painted. So these are the new ones, right? Another fun thing is that you can paint. I just like to use distress paint. So that's how I painted mine. Uh, the bottom one is spice marmalade. Now you could use carved pumpkin, go figure, but I use spice marmalade. I wanted it a little lighter. The middle one is peeled paint. The top one is antique linen. They're just painted. And then after it dries, you go over it with a little bit of distress crayon, kind of rub it in, rub it off, glued them together and put a little stick at the top. Why? Uh, because I was inspired by uh, the sneak peeks of the makes. I'm like, oh, I should add a little stick. So see, I get inspired as well. So I decided just to kind of show you how you can utilize this, uh, this paste. But there's also other things that you need to know about when you're going to add color to paste because you might think to yourself, okay, well, if I've got paste, then I've got a lot of different paints and I can alter it. So let me just take you through uh, a little, a little color sampling of this. So this is what crypt paste looks like right out of the jar. When you spread it on, right, 
the thicker it is, kind of the more gray greenish it is, like very much like a crypt or stone. When you spread it out, as I mentioned, it is translucent based. So when you put it through, you're going to be able to see through it. I like to use a palette knife because it allows me that I can spread it thin or I can build it up thick. Okay. So the color that it comes is perfect. It's perfect for a lot of things. Uh, and that's why we colored it this way. But I don't want you to be limited to seeing it and say, oh, I'm only going to use it for Halloween because that would be bad. Now it is only available for Halloween, but you might want to get maybe an extra jar for some of the other things that I'm going to, to share. So you might think, okay, if I'm going to color this, I got paint, I'm going to stick to paint. That's really not going to be a good idea. And here's why paint is opaque. It is an opaque colorant. So if you mix paint into crypt paste, it's going to change the color, but it's also going to color the flex. So all of that coolness of those little black flecks in there are gone because you painted them. So paint is not what I would suggest to tint this paste. Could you use it on the other grit paste? Absolutely. I've done it in many demos where I'm like, you can use paint, you can use ink, you can use whatever you want. But for this particular one, because of these cool little black flecks, I would not suggest paint to tint it. Instead, I would suggest using your reinkers, and you can use two different types of reinkers. You can use your distress reinkers. This is your translucent dye for distress ink. And you can also use distress oxide reinkers, also for your distress oxide pads, but this is dye and pigment. And both are very cool, but they have a unique difference. Okay. So unlike paint that is completely opaque, these are going to give us some playtime with color. Okay. So take a look at these two. Now I'll hold it to the light so you can see this one is done with ink. This is one drop to one palette knife. That's kind of my ratio, but you can go higher or lower depending on what you want. This is going to be oxide. Now the difference, this is going to be completely translucent, a little bit lighter in color because we're dealing just with a dye. This one is going to have a little bit more punch of color because oxide is a fusion of dye and pigment, but because they are inks, we don't lose those little black flecks. We still get the magic of those little speckly fleckles in there that I love. Okay. So this one, this is peeled paint, great for spring makes, great for gardens, great for moss on pots, just a very cool color uh, to incorporate year round. Now, if you're really into kind of the Spanish moss look, another color that I love is cracked pistachio. And you may not think cracked pistachio is going to work because it's such a, a bright green, but keep in mind, we're dealing with translucent color over an already tinted medium, right? So this stuff is already that color. So we need a color that's going to play into that color. So having a brighter green is going to give me a dirtier green. If I started with a dirty green, it's going to give me an even dirtier green. Does that make sense? So here you can see on uh, this particular one, our ink is actually a little deeper this time right? Because it's translucent, that light green. To me, it's got the perfect Spanish moss color. I love cracked pistachio for this. The oxide gives it just that little bit of brightness because remember, now we have that introduction of pigment, dye and pigment. So that little bright green pigment made this brighter than before, right? So much like this one, right? You go back, remember oxide is always going to make it a little bit brighter. You can see the difference in uh, oxide versus ink. It's no different. Every color is going to do the same thing. It, dye is going to give you a wonderful translucent look. Oxide is going to give you just a little punch of brightness. So it depends on what you want, right? If you want more of your background to show through, stick with ink. If you want just that paste to really stand out, go with oxide. Now the amount of ink could also impact what you do. So this one is rusty hinge. Great for rust. If you like grunge, grit paste is, is your jam for rust because here this is one dropper full and look at that. That's like the perfect rust with little black iron ore flex in there. Mm, so, so good. This, this is two drops of the same color, right? So this is rusty hinge one drop. This is rusty hinge two drops. It looks like crackling campfire, but it isn't. But still, even though I did two drops, I still see all those black flex, but my color is more intense because I did another drop of ink. Now, when I did oxide for this, again, a lighter version. Now in the world of rust, to me, this actually kind of works because rust has uh, 
dark values, mid-tones, light values. I learned that from Vicki Evans, by the way. But there's a lot of different tones in there. So uh, this one happens to be uh, the oxide version of Rusty Hinge, but it could be fossilized amber, mustard seed. I mean, once I started, it's like it was hard to stop to do it. So when I say one dropper or dropper full, no, I mean one drop, like literally one, not a dropper full. No, no, no. One, literally a drop from either the dropper, and I'll demo it to show you, uh, but thanks for asking. So it's one drop of ink that I did to mix it up. And again, it depends on how much you're making, right? Another thing to keep in mind, what if you like to do stencils, right? There's so many great stencils that I do uh, with Stampers Anonymous that you've seen, like Tammy B did the bricks, and the bricks come mini, and it comes big, right? There's also a stone rock, then there's also kind of these square stones that aren't laid out like bricks, and they both come in large and mini. So if you're gonna do any type of stonework, maybe you're gonna do bricks, crypt paste, amazing for bricks, because you can take fired brick, that's one dropper full of the ink, that's gonna give me that wonderful deep red, great for Christmas, fireplaces, all of that. This is oxide fired brick. Again, see the flex in there? Both of these colors make a little bit of each one and just kind of spread it through the stencil where you've got some of that bright translucent and then some of that opaque mixed in. Imagine doing a brick stencil with fired brick crypt paste through a stencil. Now you don't have to go back and paint them. You don't have to do any of that, right? That's all just done with ink. Of course, many wonderful stencils, Ted. You're, you are right. They are. Um, and I love that. I love thinking about a product. And that's why I think demos are often really important. Sure, it's great to make, but if you realize, man, if I would have known what I could do with it, I would have, I would have had more than just one. Or I, I would have seen like, okay, I wasn't into putting that, this gray, grimy gunk on things. I wanted, but I love brick or I love rock or I love whatever. That to me is the power of understanding inks versus uh, how magical this crypt paste is. And it is only Halloween, it, it won't be year round. But at least we got a big jar this year, guys. At least we did. Then we have the beach. If you wanted to do sand, believe it or not, this is magical sand, but not out of the jar in my opinion. This is like dirty sand. And maybe that's the sand of your beach and I'm not dissing on your beach, right? Maybe you have more of a gray sand beach, but if you want a little lighter sand beach, one drop of antique linen oxide gives you that just that little bit more of that lighter sand color but we're still getting all of that cool fun play of those little black specks in there again because antique linen is giving us that little bit of cream but we're still getting those undertones that we would get of that so we're getting those dark values and light values it's so fun so cool and so easy so here's how you do it get yourself a piece of, you can, you don't have to use parchment, right? You can use, if you have a, a craft sheet, you could do that. In fact, let me just get my media, get my media mat out. I, I just brought my travel one. There we go. I got it. Let me just open this just so I have, just so I'm demoing on something other than, there we go. Thanks, Mario. So if you're working on a mat, you could totally work on this. That's fine. But it, it gets a little messy. So uh, I like just using deli paper. This is something Paula told me about. You buy a a box of a bazillion sheets on Amazon and it's it's really nice because you can use it again and again and then then you can trash it when you need to. All right. So here I'm just going to take cardstock. It could be anything. It doesn't really matter. Like it's, it would be whatever your structure is. I'm going to take some crit paste and this is kind of my ratio, but you do you. Okay. I work from the back of the palette knife and I scoop some up. So when I say a palette knife full, that's what I mean because to me that would be enough for a project. So if you're gonna use more, you're gonna obviously need to up the, up the amount of, of color that you're gonna use, okay? So I'll just spread that down. Then we're just gonna decide what we wanna make. See, the problem is like, I wanna make so many different ones. I'll make a little batch of each. So first we're gonna just do, this will be cracked pistachio because I do love this color. So I'm gonna take my glass dropper and I'm gonna do one drop just to start, okay? You can always go back and and add more color. It's like if you're using food coloring, right? But no takesies backsies. So we don't want to use too much. And then I'm just going to press it down and scrape it off. Press, scrape, press, scrape. So that's what I'm doing on the palette knife. So it mixes up really quick. So I'm, I'm skimming, pressing. Okay. And this is the color that I made, right? It doesn't look like much. And that's the thing you have to remember. And I, I learned that uh, you know, when I did 
the rust, right? I learned this color ratio by doing because the first time I did it, I'm like, ooh, that doesn't look very, so let me go ahead and let me add some more ink. Know that right now it's in its lightest stage. It's going to dry darker because it's a translucent medium. So this, although it looks like a very pale green, is going to dry to that perfect green. And then when you spread it on, you can see that the lighter you go, the better it is. So you can put this on like the shingles of your paper village. You can, uh, you know, besides a palette knife, really, you can just go in with your finger because it's nice and wet and you can just add it and every little bit that you put it on, however you apply it, it's going to dry like that. That's the cool thing about it. But see, it's so easy to, to mix up. It's super, super simple. All right. Why would you mind just grab me a couple sheets of that watercolor real quick? I just want to make another color. Okay. I'm just going to flip this over because you can use that side of the palette. You can use this side. I mean, it's just nice to have uh, the paper handy. All right. And let's just do an oxide. I'll use the back. Thanks. All right. No worries. All right. Just going to pick this up. Just a little bit of that. There we go. I didn't have a full palette knife because I, I didn't clean that off and I don't want to get ink in there. So got our little bit of crypt paste. Oh, there we go. Thanks. All right. And then we're going to take oxide. So oxide, we need to shake this up. Uh, would spray stain work too wet? No, Cindy, you're right. It's too wet. Um, but that's a great question. If you try to do this with a spray stain and you're adding so much, this is going to turn into slime because that's way too much moisture going in. So you really want some type of concentrated colorant. If you don't have reinkers, you might want to try, I don't know, I don't know if a powdered pigment would work or if it would be too opaque, right? But, but definitely spray stain would be too wet. It just changes the viscosity. So here I'm going to go in again. I like that it has just that little needle tip. I'm going to add a little drop of it. And just, I mean, you want a good ink drop. So there we go. And we'll just start. We can always, we can always lighten it a little bit more. Okay, I'm just going to mix this up and a little goes a long way. It's really interesting because when you first mix it, you're like, oh, it's not enough. But then when you actually mix it up into the paste, you realize, okay, that's plenty. So that's our color right now. I'm going to just smear a little bit of that. Okay, but then let's add another drop just to, just to create something a little bit brighter if you want. Okay, so there we go. A little drop right there and mix that up. Perfect. Uh, do I have a little tip sheet? No. Uh, someone asked about a tip sheet. No, that's your job. My job is just here demoing. So if you have a, a pen and paper, just jot those down and say like Halloween demo and uh, crit paste. I think that's good because there's a lot of stuff and I think it's so much easier to, to share on video. But if you wanted to learn more about properties, I do have uh, an online class I did long ago called Creative Chemistry. And that does have like printables uh, of different techniques and tutorials. So if you want to learn more stuff, then you could definitely uh, do that as well. So creative chemistry will be more of learning the properties, but like things like this on new products, um, I love the demo. Cause see, you can see it. Seeing is believing, right? So this is two drops of oxide reinker. One, the second one's a little bit uh, brighter. All right, still both good colors and they're going to dry uh, totally different uh, when they're done. I mean, you can see on that, on this one, right? that's actually that one. So you can see just how much brighter it's going to dry when that pigment gets to come out. But I do, I always recommend just, just jotting down some notes. I, I know I give a lot of information in these. It's a lot. Um, so I think just being able to, to jot those down is, and I do a blog recap, but I don't post all the stuff on the blog because, well, there's only so many hours in the day, but I at least post the like I'll post these little swatches and at least when you see it on the blog, you'll know like, oh, hey, that's the video that I saw that, that demo on. So hopefully that helps at least. All right, so that was tinting the crit paste. I think it's very cool to, to just kind of be, be inspired about trying things out and learning colors. I did see a question about alcohol inks. Um, you can try alcohol ink, but here's the thing, it's solvent based. And so I found that when you do that, it starts to, this one, this doesn't want to spread. It wants to kind of roll off because the solvent I think is attacking what's inside here because this is a water-based medium and you really shouldn't mix water and solvent. So I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm just saying it is going to impact the way this applies to a surface. So I wasn't, I wasn't very pleased with it. So, but Hey, if that's what you have, you can at least try a little bit and see, you know, if you have any little, little tricks on that. So those are just so many different color options of, you know, a very cool product that we only do for Halloween and whether you're using your, 
your reinkers. I think that's important. But yeah, my first mind went to like, oh, let's do paint. And then it was like, nah, not really. So there you go. So far, so good. Good. Hope you guys like that. All right. So the next one I had, and, we, and we've talked about this a lot. This is this is actually a tray of many ideas, but you'll you'll get it. Is just ways that we can alter things with simple things that we already have. And I think altering uh, often often make something seasonal. Okay. So uh, I don't know where I'm going to start. I think I'll start over here. We're going to start with these guys. So these are the ideology bubbles. So this is how they look and they're all just different sizes, right? They're clear. So you could certainly leave them clear, but you saw many makers uh, creating a tinted version, right? This is a sample I did last year when they first came out, uh, light them up because you can just drill through the cauldron, uh, glue these on. But if you were going to do green lights, you wouldn't necessarily need to do green bubbles, but keep in mind that when the lights off, if you didn't have uh, them tinted green, then it would probably look more like a, a bubble bath than a cauldron, but hey, they would still light up green if you use green tiny lights. But they're very easy to, to tint, okay? And they can be used for a lot of things. You'll see bubbles used uh, at Christmas for snowballs and all sorts of things. So this is one of those that, you know, may start out as Halloween, but you kind of see uh, how cool they are, especially at different times of the year, okay? I'm just gonna move this off to the side over here. There we go, there we go. Excellent, just so I have a little, little space to work. You can work in a portion cup. You can work in uh, just a variety of things. It's totally up to you uh, what you want to do. You can use a piece of cardstock for the top. You can take uh, two cups and you can tape it together. You can try using a Ziploc bag, but I don't really like that when I'm coloring bubbles or bobbles. Uh, so what you want to do is you want to put them in a container, some. So let me just put some of them in there. Okay, that's good. I'll we'll do a little small one in there. There we go. Just put some in a, a cup. And this could be any kind of cup that you want it to, to be, totally up to you. And then you can take whatever colors, this is where alcohol ink comes in because alcohol ink is for non-porous surfaces. So these will not color with distress ink or distress oxide or sprays or paint. You need alcohol ink for this. The alcohol ink is going to be translucent. It's going to coat them. Let's actually do some purple ones. That would be fun. Let's do a, a purple bit. So this one's boysenberry alcohol ink, okay? And you're just going to go in and you're just going to add a few drips. Now, if you're going to use alcohol ink and you have uh, one of your media mats, remember, don't use it over here because it will stain it. So stay off of that. I'm just going to try a lid over the top and see how I can see if I can hold those together. But I just like to kind of shake it around, right? You can see how it just swirls around that ink. I like that better because I can kind of control that. So portion cups really work. Uh, they're pretty inexpensive. But then you can see what color, just like that. Beautiful. I think I want them to be a little bit more intense. So super simple just to add a couple other drops. It's, it's going to always stay translucent. So the thing to remember about alcohol ink is that the tonal value of alcohol ink you use is ultimately what they're going to be. Meaning it's only going to be a deeper value of this boysenberry. It's never going to be a dark purple, right? Amethyst or whatever you would. And you can mix and match alcohol ink colors as well. So there we go. Just kind of move that. Hmm, look at those. Beautiful. So I just let you can leave them in this cup to dry or you can put them uh, out on a, a paper towel. Keep in mind that alcohol ink also contains resin. So if you let them dry in this cup, which is perfectly fine, just know when you come back to it, they're going to be stuck together initially uh, because of the resin, but not permanently. Okay. But normally when I do stuff, I just like to take a paper towel, take them out of the cup. This way they can dry like that right? They're pretty much already dry, so I don't have to worry about wasting any ink. I, don't, I just don't like to leave it in there because sometimes when I go to peel them off, uh, it kind of takes away some of the coloring. So that's why I just leave them on there. See, that's not really getting ink everywhere. Really nice, right? So then you can light them up. You can do uh, whatever you want to do. Really, really simple uh, when it comes to, to working with your colors. A lot of different ink colors. So alcohol inks for uh, bubbles, and you can make them any color you want. Great for ornaments as well, okay? So far, so good. Great. These are already, <laughs> I'm just going to take this without having these go everywhere. There we go. Okay. Move that off. Set that over here. Then some other things that we can, that we can color. And I don't need to show this because you'll totally understand it, but just so you can get kind of a, a little connect the dot visual because I mentioned it. So these of course are bouquet and bouquet. They, they are paper wrapped flowers. They're wired. They come in clusters right? Just like this. 
and they also have kind of a paper stamen. So unlike um, a lot of other flowers that are usually synthetic or they have a plastic inside, that paper will also take the color, the entire thing. What I would suggest using are spray inks, right? You can try to do the smush of your ink pad, but it just doesn't go everywhere, but you could. Uh, but stray, sprays are so much easier. So you can use either uh, Distress Mica Stain, obviously that's gonna give us some color and some shine, or you can use spray stain, or you can even use oxide spray, right? Or any other kind of spray ink, right? Dilutions, Dina, any sprayable, because uh, what you would do is just take your flowers, depending on how much you wanted, uh, you open them up a little bit just to give it some space. Uh, you can work in a, a splat box. Normally I like to spray them. I like to have a glove for this because then I like to just kind of squish the ink into the flowers because there's so many little areas that I want soaked with color. This happens to be fortune teller. So you can see that, that wonderful pearlescent shine that's from the mica stain. Uh, take a look at, this one is iron gate. So you can see it just kind of has that silvery look. And then of course decayed. And decayed is like great dead flowers. And these could be scrunched, even though they kind of flatten out when you spray it. You could go in with collage medium on your fingers and you could give it shape again. But that's the nice thing about the paper and you can, yeah, you can bend them. So that's where all the makers are using all their little flowers when you saw them in pink and red and blue and green. That's why we just did one pack in ideology, right? To me, that is about saying, I've got flowers and I can make them springtime fun or I can make them Halloween or I could do whatever I wanted with, with those. And one skew is just something that you can utilize all your colorant on. Another thing that you can use uh, your colors on, but they do only come out uh, at Christmas, are the woodland trees. And it's funny because we see a lot of woodland trees show up in craft stores now, uh, year after year. The only thing I would suggest to you before you, uh, I'm not saying don't buy them there, I'm saying before you invest in, in bottle brush trees, if you plan to ink them, just make sure that they're made out of something natural. These are made out of sisal, right? So this is a natural material, like what they make rope out of. And these are designed to take color. Many of the bottle brush trees are synthetic, so they're plastic. And if you try to use it on a synthetic plastic tree, the ink won't take to that kind of tree. So just test it out before you're like, ooh, score, all right? The thing to, to know about this is that you can do fun trees. We saw Zoe's make with candy corn. Uh, it's just fun because this, I just took uh, a little bit of, of masking tape, right? So I started with just a piece of painter's tape and kind of made a cone. So I worked from the bottom up sprayed this one with a little spray stain again in the splat box. And I think I did a video on this last year where I actually did it. Uh, if you just type Halloween, you'll probably see it. Did my, my yellow first, blotted off with a paper towel. Then I just moved my, my tape cone kind of up a little bit, right? And then I added some tape here. Again, just using painter's tape because it was the easiest thing. It just made like a loop. And then I sprayed a little carved pumpkin on this one, right? So this was masked and I sprayed orange, blotted off. And then I just left the tip of it just just plain, and then you've got a candy corn tree. And then I added some glitter to it. So we'll talk about glitter. But, you know, coloring things, again, from, from baubles to flowers, just it's quite fun to alter things. Really, really is. And that's why you'll, you'll see people like, oh, trees, I need to get several. Why? Well, because if you want to do Halloween trees, trees aren't out until Christmas, so you'll have to wait. So we'll talk about adding a little sparkle. And you saw this from Tammy B and Jan and, and a lot of makers that really wanted to add a little sparkle to, uh, to their sweets, their candy. We're gonna work with rock candy glitter. Now rock candy glitter, this is the new packaging, which I love, uh, but it's the same if you have the, the older packaging. This is a clear glitter, it's a dry glitter, right? But it has different particle sizes, so it looks like sugar. There's no iridescence, you don't see a green or a blue or a gold, it's truly clear. But the fact that it has different particle sizes, that's what's gonna give it that like sugary vibe, if you will, okay? Now, when you work with it, could you use collage medium? Yes, I just don't like to use collage medium when I want my glitter to be totally translucent. I will use collage medium and rock candy at Christmas because it, it looks a little bit more snowy because this is a matte drying glue. This is glossy. Glossy Accents is a gloss drying glue and by having it gloss dry, it, re it retains its translucency and makes everything seem, in my opinion, just more sparkly. But again, you use what you have, you do you, okay? If you want to uh, add some glitter to things, you have many, many options. To me, this is something that uh, I would kind of get gloves on and just do my thing, but I'll, I'll just show you how, how quick it could be, okay? You're gonna just take some glossy accents. You're just gonna squeeze some out, okay? I always like to give that a couple of love taps. 
I do that with any, any nozzle tipped adhesive. If you give it a couple taps, it pulls the glue out of the nib before you put the cap on and it really helps uh, minimize it clogging up, right? Whenever you have a fine tip bottle. Then you can go in with a paintbrush, you can do whatever you, whatever you wanna do. You can work from the jar itself or if you don't wanna contaminate it, you can put some in there. I'm not worried about contaminating it because there's no ink involved, but you know, some people, they, they get concerned. We're just gonna take this, again, probably use a brush, but I'll just use my finger because it's gonna work just fine. And you're just going to quickly coat this so you can rub it through your fingers and then drop it into the glitter and shake it up and just leave it there and do another one. And so I'm just kind of wiping it around and while that's still slippery, I wanna drop it in there. If it starts to get tacky, the glossy accents is, is drying and that's not gonna do you any good. So that's why you just kind of wanna uh, massage that in, drop it in if you can, shake it up. And then occasionally you're gonna have to go in and use a baby wipe or a paper towel to get that glossy accents off. Otherwise, though, you're not gonna be able to do the dismount on the candy, right? <laughs> it's just gonna stick and you're gonna be flicking candy corns against the wall. So just have a paper towel or baby wipe to clean the glossy accents accents off while it's wet in between your little layered pieces. All right. Um, so this, let me just take these out. They're already done. You could use tweezers, whatever. doesn't matter. Squeezers. squeezers. I do like using squeezers. All right. There's our little sparkly corns. Cute, right? And the glitter's on there. It's just done. It's clear, simple. So on the tree, same thing. Glossy accents on my finger. Just touch the outside of the tree roll it into the glitter on a plate and, and put it back. But it, it just couldn't be easier. Super simple. The other nice thing about this glitter for some people that just have a, you know, an issue with glitter, like I do, usually glitter is like an outdoor ac activity. Um, this doesn't become airborne. So rock candy is, is not like regular glitter where it just kind of goes everywhere. Okay. It doesn't become airborne at all. So that's why I'm not worried about using it. So just going to go in and tap that down and we'll just do the candy stick. So again, I, I find that your finger is the easiest for this, but some people just have, just have issues because of the texture and the stickiness, but really painting this thing would take forever in my opinion. Drop the stick in, roll it into the sugar, kind of like a churro. See, gosh, we should just make little churros. Yes, that would be good. Okay. And then again, just cleaning my fingers off. I can clean off the glossy accents off of the mat right there. That's pretty easy. So anything that you want to add uh, glitter to, whether it's bells or, or candies or anything, that's just how easy it is. And take a look at, see what I mean? It's just so sugary. That's what I love about rock candy because it is clear. And some people are like, oh, I'll just buy clear glitter somewhere else. Go ahead. You, I've tried it, been there, done that. I just think it's important to have those different particle sizes because I, I wanna be able to see the color of whatever's underneath there. Right. So that's why to me, uh, this glitter is, it's the good stuff. It's the sugar right now. This I'll just put back because I don't have any color on there, but let's say you were doing something that you inked. It is a good idea to have that. Cause maybe if you accidentally put something in where the ink was still wet and you tinted the glitter, cause we know we can ink that, um, you could absolutely go in and, uh, and take, take some of that color and contaminate your whole jar. So I do like to just work in a portion cup and then if it's clean, I'll put it back in. All right. So just right there, I mean, that just shared just some ways that we could take uh, several different ideology things, right? From bubbles, alcohol ink, uh, the, the bouquet to use some sprays, and then of course, uh, the candy and the woodlands to do a little rock candy. Pretty fun, right? All right, moving on. Hope you guys find these like really, really important, really convenient. So I always love to take things uh, to the next level. It's, it's important to me to, to always push the envelope. So one of the things that I love uh, when it comes to metals, right? And you saw this a lot. These are the Halloween plaques and these are the shape seals. Now you can grit paste these. So you can take any of that crit paste and you can add some of that. You can add paint on these. Some people do paint. To me, the easiest thing is using a distressed crayon, right? And distressed crayons, like you can, you can pick different colors. Okay, let me just move this off to the side as well. You can pick some different colors. I like Picket Fence, it's white, but some of the colors are, are a white base. So any of the lighter colors like Tattered Rose, Shabby Shutters, uh, Weathered Wood, they're gonna be kind of a white creamy base. But here's what's nice about using uh, a distressed crayon. Pumice Stone is also another good one. You can simply scribble this over the metal, 
See, and it kind of goes on kind of creamy like a, it's a little bit of a cheese grater because these crayons are, they go pretty soft. And then you want to go in with your finger and you want to just work this in with your finger because the, the give of your finger is going to be really important because see how I can push that crayon out of the way. See if I want to move it away from the letter. Okay. But once I'm happy with it, I'm done. So unlike, you know, acrylic paint where you have to put some on, wait until it's dry, but not too dry, but wet enough. And then you wipe it off. And then it's, to me, this is so much easier than doing it with paint because what you see is what you get done, finished. You let it dry. The crayon will cure in about, I don't know, five to 10 minutes. And then it's no longer going to be moving. It's going to be water reactive. So if you got it wet, you could clean it off, but it's not going to come off if you touch it, right? When you first touch a crayon, you think this stuff is never going to dry. These crayons are designed to dry. Okay. So at first it, it seems creamy and then it just goes into a, a perfect dry state. Okay. So we're going to do the same thing on this guy. This guy's a little deeper. So don't be afraid to just that, just smush it in there and then just go in with your fingers and move it around, create a very cool oxidized look. Now, if you want to remove some, right? A brush is going to work, but also a paper towel will work because a paper towel is just going to just give enough, enough kind of, I don't know, abrasion just to remove some of that. See, look at that. Take some of that out and you can remove as much of it as you want. Now I'm just going to my fingernail and being a little picky, right? Getting some out from behind his head, right? But once you're happy with it, look at that. Very cool. Done. It was that simple. And you can do that again with any kind of uh, distress crayon. You could still do it with acrylic paint, I'm not saying don't, but if you're looking for a quick way um, and you have these crayons, it's a very quick way to go in and, and alter uh, these pieces because I think, sure, they look great in the plating that we do because we do them in a, a beautiful plated finish, but I also love the difference when you just add a little bit of a little grunge to it and it couldn't be easier. And sometimes you look at these makes and you think, oh my gosh, it, so long to add this stuff. No, if you have the right medium and that's why you need all the different mediums, right? For as makers, that's what we need. We need all those different mediums. So one of my favorite mediums that uh, we launched this year is called foundry wax. Now foundry wax is a liquid. Okay. It is a liquid wax. Some people think it's an ink. It's not, it's an actual wax. You shake it up. Okay. So it is fluid. It comes in four different finishes. When you first put it down, there's a whole video on foundry wax, so you can learn more about it there. But when you put it on, um, it goes on wet and then you can paint it on, you can rub it over embossed paper, any of that, but then you must heat this with a heat tool. This requires heating. And when you do, it gets the wax to actually leaf and create a beautiful metallic leafing. Okay. The cool thing about this is that foundry wax can go on any kind of substrate. So, you know, for me, for Halloween, I really needed to kind of up my game and really make an entire little bucket of metallic skulls and bones because hello there. Come on. Come on. Who doesn't want these metal skulls and bones that they can put on anything in anything and just create a cool, a cool decorative piece, right? So again, you could drill these and they could be wine trans, but they look like metal skulls, but they're the same resin skulls or, you could take your pumpkins and now you can create these beautiful little metallic pumpkins that maybe you want to put uh, on a fall tablescape. Maybe you want to attach them again for uh, charms or put them on a candle stand or make napkin rings out of them. But these little metallic pumpkins, right? Look at that. So beautiful. And they could be all these different colors that you would want to do. And it's much easier than you think. So I'm going to show you. <laughs> I love foundry wax. It is, it is the thing. It's the most amazing product. I think really we've ever done next to distress ink and oxide, of course, but it's just a, it's a wild, wild thing. So what you want to do is you're going to pick whatever color you want. I think for this, I think I'm going to actually just do statue. Statue is a good one on camera because you'll see the, the change a little quicker. Now, because I'm going to paint it onto something, I want to be able to thin out my foundry wax. If I'm going to use it, uh, let's say kind of as a, as a rub, cause I'll just show you, right? You want to mix these up. They have a mixing ball. So I'm going to shake it up and I can use it directly on here. I don't, it's not an alcohol ink, so you can use it directly on here. Okay. Let's just bring these into view so we can just ooh and ah over, over sky. I mean, really, and like, look at these bones. 
Seriously, look at these metallic bones. Skulls, bones, mm. yeah, so good, mm. so good, yeah, and pumpkins. Okay, we'll put those there. So when I'm working with this, if I apply some to a surface, okay, a little drip of that, and I'll just kind of take you through the process. I'm not actually going to do this again. There's a whole video, but it starts out as an ink, totally fluid. But when you first, when you put it on, you can see it immediately becomes a wax. It becomes creamy, right? It's not an ink that's going to wipe. It actually even picks up the texture of the paper. And the longer it sits in the air, the thicker it gets. And eventually it goes from a liquid to a cream, to a wax, to a dust. It's gone, right? So you have to use it as soon as you take it out of the bottle. You can't just let it sit there. But it is heat activated, okay? So that's really where we're going to get into the play of the heat activation. Because I want to paint something, I'm going to thin it with isopropyl alcohol. Any kind of isopropyl, it could be 80%, uh, it could be anything. Isopropyl is what's going to thin it, not blending solution, right? It needs to just be isopropyl. Now, how thin do you want to get it? Well, I would only recommend a couple of drops because the more isopropyl you add, the less leafing it's going to do, right? If you thin it out so much, it's got nothing to bond together. So you just kind of watch this and get an idea for what I did. Because I want to paint something, uh, another idea that I like to do is just take a, a popsicle stick and glue on whatever I'm going to do with some hot glue. Okay, in this case, there's our skull that we're going to do. Just a little glue. I can twist this off later. You'll see it's really easy. But it's just, it's so much easier than trying to hold it while I'm painting it. And certainly because we have to heat it, I'm not going to hold on to it when I'm heating it. Okay. For this, I'm just going to take a little brush. This is just a flat brush. This is from uh, the Alcohol Ink Toolkit. I like this short little flat brush. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to shake it up. We want to make sure that there's no sludge at the bottom. We want to mix that wax. If you don't hear the mixing bowl, a couple of taps on the table because sometimes it gets stuck up in the, in the little schnozzle of it. Now, these three colors, right, statue, mind, and gilded, they're all fairly fluid. Sterling is double the thickness of all the other ones. So when you go to shake it, you don't really hear a mixing ball. Occasionally you might hear something like clunk, but this doesn't have the same viscosity as these. So don't panic about that. Uh, the reason is, is because I really wanted it to be like super, super shiny, like, like sterling silver. So it has so much of that uh, metallic leafing powder in it that it's just a thicker viscosity. So that's just what it is. It doesn't have a colorant to thin it out. So think about these, the, all the other ones have just a, a different color to thin it out. So don't, don't panic. All right. So I'm going to shake this one up. I'm going to take some of this, squirt out a little pile at first. Okay. I can always add more. Then I'm going to take my ISO and I need to thin it immediately. So I'm going to do like three drops of isopropyl, right? You can't, it can't bring it back to life. You, you can only thin it when it's still wet. Then I'm just going to quickly mix it. And then I'm just going to start painting. And you can see when I'm painting, I'm literally just like, slathering it on okay because at first it does go on really wet but this is going to allow me to get it like in the teeth and in the eye sockets right and then i just keep going around just pick this up i'll go over the back of that and then you're going to feel when you're doing this you'll feel it start to thicken up okay pretty easy there we go nice okay now when you're working with this another thing that i want to to remind you of is that once it starts to thicken up, you don't want to keep going back and painting it because you're just going to end up starting to take it off. So this is what we have right now. Get the camera to focus on it, right? So my wax is on there. I see that it's pretty covered. You could always go back and do a second coat if you needed to after you, after you set it, but don't worry about it. So uh, the stuff on here, this is just kind of a creamy mess. See, it's, it wouldn't even spread like paint anymore. It's too dry. So that's why you wanted that little bit of isopropyl that's going to give you the open time to clean your brush you're going to clean your brush with isopropyl right so that's the easiest thing uh, once you paint it you're not rushed nope once it's on there it's not permanent at this point but now i can i can do my cleanup and all that so i'm just going to put a little little isopropyl into a cup that's what i use to clean my brush see it just cleans it right off so isopropyl will clean it off of anything if it's on the glass if it's on here if it's on your brush um, that's all you have to do to, to clean it off. Okay. So once it's on there, it's on there, but it's not permanent at this point. We have to set foundry wax. Okay. When we go to set it, you want to use a heat tool. I prefer to use an embossing gun over a craft tool. Um, 
You can use a craft tool, but I want something that's going to be directional, that's going to get very hot very quick. Uh, but if you have the Ranger heat tool, you could. It's just going to take a little bit longer, not to panic, but uh, that's why I'm using this one versus uh, the craft tool. The other thing to remember is that these guys need to be out of the way when you heat. Because if I go to heat this and my bottle is sitting here or here and it's in the direct line of heat, you will solidify the entire contents of your bottle. Done. Okay? Because this is heat activated. So just get it out of the way. And now we're going to heat it. And I'll do what I can do um, just to kind of show you how this works. Someone asked about the percentage of ISO. Yes, I mentioned if you use too much isopropyl then and you thin it out too much, it won't leaf. It won't do what it's going to do next. So I would just start with a couple of drops right, and go from there. You'll, you'll kind of get the feel for how much wax is down there to how much drops, but don't overdo it. All right. So what we're going to do next is we're going to set this. So it only sets with heat. It's not melting with heat. It's actually transforming. That's the whole foundry wax thing. Okay. So I'm going to heat this up, get this hot, and I'm just going to try to show you the transformation. So right now it's metallic, but it's kind of a dull metallic, is it not? Yes. Okay. Let's see if I can do this. All right. So because it's resin, it's going to take just a minute. It does it much faster on paper because paper, of course, is flat and thin. So the resin has to get totally hot to the temperature. You'll see when it changes. It's just going to start becoming, oh, I see it already. <laughs> okay. But I'm trying to get the light to hit it. I want to kind of get you to see that side. Can you see already what's happening? Okay. There we go. Can you see that leafing happening? So it's not melting, it's actually leafing. Okay, there's that shine. Now, because I have hot glue, I wanna work around this guy before I go to the bottom. Meaning if I point my heat tool along the bottom where the hot glue is, it's gonna remelt the hot glue and it's gonna fall off the stick. So I'll, I'll show you kind of the workaround on that. Okay, let me just do a little straight on right now. Okay, I'm gonna just turn this off for a second before I finish it, just so you can see what we have so far. So we have so far, like look at, I mean, totally metallic, completely different than before, but it's not done. You can see it's still a little dull back there. So once I get the top done, I need to work on the bottom. I'm going to work down here. The reason is, is because if you're holding it up, doing it and you heat this, uh, does Foundry Wax work on metal? Yes, it does. You can work on metal, on resin, on glass, anything that is heat stable. So would it work on styrofoam? Is styrofoam heat stable? No. Would it, you could try it, but it's going to melt the styrofoam. Plastics, some plastics um, it would work on, but if the plastic is too thin, it's going to melt. So like those resin bones, it was fine. These skulls, fine. Yeah, you could do this metal and you could change it anything. It, it goes right onto it. So when you're heating this, if you're holding this up and I'm heating the bottom and I heat the hot glue, the weight of this skull is just going to drop. So I don't want that to happen. So now I'm just going to work uh, right on the mat. So you won't see it change, but I'm going to look close just to kind of get it to change. The other cool thing is you can't overheat this. So unlike embossing powder, if you're not sure of something, just heat it a little bit longer. It's not going to, it's not going to reverse the finish because once the foundry wax is set, it's set. It, it won't go back. So it, again, it's not a wax that's melting. It's a liquid wax that actually leaves it is heat activated and it leaps when it is heated. All right, just turning. That's the other thing I like about the, the stick. It's allowing me to kind of go around, getting all the little angles that I want. Okay, I think I'm good. I think I'm good with that. All right, so now it's hot, okay? So as much as you wanna just pick this up and do that, don't do it, it's hot, okay? But the foundry wax itself, you can see just from the shine is ready to go. Okay. Beautiful. Now, if you're like me and you're impatient, I just add a little water to it. That's going to cool it down. Right. You can let it cool. It won't take too long. Okay. There you go. It's still pretty warm, but it's not blazing hot. It'll be cool in just a second because we're not done. I mean, it could be done, but I'll show you, this is what we have because these are both the same color. Okay. We have this and we're going to do this. See the difference? I mean, it's a night and day different. So this next step to me is, is what makes it just amazing, amazing, amazing. All right. 
So just going to touch it. Oh, not bad. Not bad. It's still pretty warm, so I need to wait. I can't. Um, okay, it's warm enough for me to touch. So even if it's our, even if it's completely cool to the touch, but all you're going to do is take this and just twist it, and it comes off the hot glue. Okay, the hot glue stays on the stick. You peel it off, and you're done. Now, if you're going to put it in something, then you're going to want to then do another step at this point, and that is paint the bottom and do uh, another layer of foundry wax at this point. So. You know, when it comes off the stick, if you knew you were going to, say, have them roll around, then my advice is to do all your skulls, have another batch, and just paint the bottoms and set the bottoms again, okay, before you do the last step, okay? So here's what we've got. We're going to antique this guy, and what we're going to use to antique is also a crayon, just not white. We're going to use walnut stain, right? It could be any color, but I like walnut stain. That's kind of my brown of choice. Uh, and I'm also going to use a brush. So I'm going to use a blending brush because, and this is my one that's dedicated for a crayon, because I want to get the brown into all the detail. My fingers, as much as, as pudgy as they are, I can move around. I'm not going to get it inside the detail. I need a brush to do this. And I love this blending brush because I can either have the bristles compact, which you'll see me do sometime, or pull this back and have them flare out to really get the color in there. Easy enough. So we're going to take our distressed crayon and we're just going to scribble it right on there. Like really, who cares? Scribble some on. We don't have to color it. That's it. That, that's as beautiful as it gets. Then I'll take my fingers first, just like we did with the white, and just kind of move it around. Then I'll take the brush. And all of, this is all water reactive, so any crayon that gets to the outside, it's going to clean off super easy. But I'll start with the brush big so see i can work all that see in his sockets and his teeth right and then if i have an area where i really need to focus i'll slide this forward and that's going to compact the bristles and that's going to allow me to like push this into the back of his head into that little spot i just like this brush for, for i mean i love it for ink of course but i really like it for a crayon because it just gives me you know it's kind of like just playing the trombone right everyone's done that where you just get to slide that down slide that back but now we have all the color in there. Now at this point, it doesn't look good either, right? Because now we have the crayon on the top. There's no time limit for this. So you can, you can clean up if you want, right? I'm just gonna, this will take all the crayon off. Crayon does not stain your hands at all. Uh, it won't stain the barrel of the crayon. It won't stain the brush, right? The brush, you're just gonna slide this all the way up to cover the bristles, put the cap on that hits the bump and it locks into place, okay. Then what we want to do is we want to take a paper towel with water. We do not want a baby wipe for this. A baby wipe is just too wet. Okay. So all we want to do is just take a little bit of water, spray that down. Okay. Just a little bit, right? It's not much on there. It's just lightly damp. And then we're going to just go in and do the reveal. You'll see. Look at that. Whew. Right. It's just taking off that crayon. You can take off as much as you want. You can dab, you can wipe. Now you want to keep going to clean areas, right? Otherwise you're just going to kind of smear the brown. And then when you're happy like that, you're done. Beautiful. Finished. A finished metal skull. So simple, so cool that we could, we can add that, that detail to these pieces, right? It's just pretty remarkable how you can take something uh, that was a certain color and just literally make it look like it's metal, right? Especially vintage metal and using all just really simple products. So the pumpkin, same thing, foundry wax, crayon, right? And the crayon over the top of it, that's where the, the brush is really gonna come in because you can get it in between all those little parts of the pumpkin, right? You could glue stuff to it if you wanted to. I just think it's, it's, a, very, it's a very unique product that I think we often forget about when we're looking around. And, I mean, yes, as much as I love the ideology stuff, keep in mind, you could be at the craft store, the dollar store, looking for things that are quite ugly in appearance, but as long as they're heat stable, you can use foundry wax, right? So even if it's made out of a resin that's got a weird painting on it, if you like the shape of it, that's gonna, that's gonna totally work for, for this. But how great is that just to have a whole tin of, of skulls and bones, right? And let's say you wanted to take more of the crayon off. I'll just show you on this one that I just did. We can always go back and add more water at any time. And now you'll see the second coating when I take it off. You'll see that it even shines up his face even more, right? So you can always go back and add and subtract uh, the crayon, the, the, best, 
the best you want because I think, you know, as a, as a maker, we all have different, different tastes, different looks, different, different things, but I wanted, I wanted things to be inspiring. And the last thing I'm going to share with you, and then we'll wrap this thing up. I was super inspired. I was saying to Mario that I just, you know, I always, especially around the season, it's like, I just want to make, I want to make, I want to make. And one of the things that is, you guys know, my favorite um, is candy corn, right? That was my favorite release. And I'm like, what if, like, wouldn't it be cool if, and you know, when I say, wouldn't it be cool if that things are going to happen in my brain. And I said to him, I'm like, Hey, can you help me out? And he goes, yeah, sure. What do you want? I'm like, wouldn't it be cool if we could just take some candy corn and just kind of change it? And he's like, change it. How? And I'm like, well, I don't know. Like I love candy corn. I love tiny lights. So wouldn't it be cool if I could actually light up candy corn and make a candy corn light? Come on. And dude. he's like, you're crazy. And I'm like, I'm crazy in love with candy corn. So yes, I made this little ghost guy. Well, I bought the little ghost guy and I totally used ideology uh, on that. So he has an entire little candy corn lit up garland that comes out of the jack-o'-lantern. He's got his little battery pack. I think he's going to be cute. Look, I did his little, there's a skull and crossbones I told you about. Put a little feather in his little top hat. I grunged him up. You can see there's some crayon. Same brown crayon, I colored him and sprayed him and, and just dripped it on there. Jack-o'-lantern, we know what's in the bottom of that jack-o'-lantern, don't we? Yep, styrofoam ball. And then he just sits there. And so now when he's sitting on the table, the battery pack can be hidden, right? Between some pumpkins and books and everything else. Uh, so that can be hidden. So here's, here's really how simple it is to, to, to create it. It really wasn't that bad, was it, Mario? Super wasn't, fun. super fun. But I love that they're wired because see, they could just, they're so cute. Okay. So all we did was, was take candy corn. You need an eighth inch drill bit. Okay. Just an eighth inch. When you do this, you can work with a Dremel, but if you work with a Dremel, it's important that you have like a drill press or you need something to hold the candy corn, right? So we just use uh, some flat pliers, right? Well, you I can, my fingers at, first, at first, but like, yeah, I have these pliers that like have no teeth in them. So that just allowed you to like hold the candy corn while you're drilling it, right? If you have pliers with teeth, you don't want it to, to ruin it. And then you just drill into them. So I would imagine you could even do this by hand if you wanted to just sit there and drill or if you had a hand drill, it's gonna take a while. Now, the deeper you go, the more you're gonna light up all the way to the bottom. You might have some casualties where you pop out the side. Don't worry, that's still good, right? Because you're only gonna see one side of the corn. So if you have a, a little back part that you blow out the side, don't worry about it because they're all a little different. Then on the tiny lights, okay, the tiny lights are just simple. I love candy and I, I like to play with my food. There's nothing wrong with that. So the tiny lights, the eighth inch, all you would do is take that light, right? So you'd work from the end, that's going to work. But then when you get to the next light, you just bend the wire back. You pinch that down to make a little light bulb, right? And then we take a piece of corn that's got a hole in it. There you go. And then that just slides over the top. That's it. It's done. Now, if you want to, you could glue it on, right? Because, you know, if you're, if you're too crazy, you're knocking around, the corn could come off. But I mean, the, the corn slides on pretty secure. Uh, I glued mine on. So after I liked it, I'm like, oh, I don't want to worry about, you know, losing a piece of candy corn. So I just did a little dot of collage medium onto the light bulb and then slid it into uh, the corn. But now when you light it up, see, it lights up the corn. Very cute. Really, really simple. And it just depends on how many pieces you want to do. So you could do a lot of things out of, out of clay, but because they were soft, I thought it'd be really fun just to take these and, and drill them, right? I, and see, they're, they don't have to be perfect, but I just started on the end, kind of glued those in, and then just took the wire and wrapped it around his hand, kind of came around the back of him, then went around his legs, and then just have that battery pack. And you can see just a little bit of tape right there just to hold that battery pack in place because he is going to stand up. And I liked his hat, but I really wanted him to have a little, I don't know. I wanted to jazz him up is what I said tomorrow. But the ghost was very, very white. And I love just grunging him up. So a little crayon. Again, I just colored the, I actually smeared it, right? Just like I did the skulls, sprayed him, just hosed him with water and just let the water just drip and dry. It took maybe, you know, half an hour or so, but it has that great muck going down him. He's cute. Right. I think, I think the whole, maybe he was 10 bucks or something. Like you can get him at TJ Maxx or wherever you find Halloween things, but it just gives you an idea that, you know, if you want to go crazy and, and have fun with, you know, with stuff, don't be afraid to answer the what if, right? That to me is, 
is what's great about answering that what if. And I think all the makers truly did that. 